right, here we are. I suggest putting the headphones on too, my friend. There we go. Make sure oh, wow. you can hear yourself. I hear nice and clean. I hear. And then make sure you get that proximity effect proper with the microphone so we uh, sound super sexy for the people on the radios and on YouTube out there. I got Jerry Pesh hanging out in the building. Hello, hello. Pesh Effects Art. Gotta love that. This man is amazing. I've known him forever. Used to do lighting at uh, House of Blues when I was back there doing audio when I was a young alcoholic. Yep, yep. I'm fucking making a mess of my life. How you been, man? You had the beard and I didn't have the beard, so now we're flipped, <laughs> so we just basically reversed it. That's right. I, I'm, I got the clean shape and then, you know, the uh, that baby face going on right now, man. That beard of yours is super impressive, man. I I'm like Gandalf level. That's pretty much what it's become at this point. That does definitely <laughs> classify you as a wizard at this point. Pretty much. For sure, man. So I hear uh, I hear you're getting fucked over by the coronavirus just like the rest of us, man. Oh, man. So, I mean, uh, look, here's the deal. We do like 35 shows a year around the country and we like, you know, we pick our schedule sometimes as 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 early as the moment we finish the show, we book the next year's show. So there's times where some of these shows like we're paying for a show a year out going, OK, here we go. We're going to do this show. And we the first thing we noticed was was the problems going on. We were supposed to do Emerald City this weekend. Um, and we were hearing a little bit of whispers through the, the grapevine that there might be some issues. And we were like, all right, well, let's just let's just hope. Let's just hope. And. And no matter what, you know, voice of reason I could bring to the table here about like it's just old people that wouldn't be at a Comic Con anyway that are, you know, getting sick in these homes and all this stuff. It just it just escalated and then it got out of control. So, yeah, here we are with this. Now we're looking at like a week later. I'm home. Uh, that show's canceled. But now I'm not looking at I have no shows right now until like maybe April. And it's just nuts. Yeah, dude. Me, te- me neither, man. I just lost. I, I thought I picked up some dates and then they literally they just canceled right on the way over here to go talk to you, man. And it's just like, it's that time, man. You know, thankfully, uh, you know, we do well sometimes. We can hoard some cash and hopefully we make it through it. And uh, it doesn't take forever to get back uh, to doing shows. Well, I mean, and, and that's the thing is when I made the transition, you know, when I, you know, because as you know, I was a lighting director for 20 years. Uh, you know, that was a different deal where I would book your shows you would just keep trying to be as busy as possible um, but now what's happening is I'm finding as an artist I have commissions I have deals like for certain books I'm trying to get stuff done for uh, so I have timelines of things that I have to get done in between so the nice part and I do this is where I feel from most of my production brethren that are kind of sitting out in the cold now is that as opposed to where I can sit there and go draw a new piece and put it up on the website and go hey guys want to buy it I could sell that and that's what I'm doing I'm literally like kind of going back to just create new pieces so I can sell things um, right off the bat and getting back to my commissions because I do I, I, I'm i one of those guys that lucks out I don't advertise I have a commission list but at this point I have over 30 commissions that people just keep getting on the list for Oh man! so it's been lucky because I have you know people just the moment we post that we have a commission suddenly it's like oh you take commissions I'm like yeah, I do you want to get on the list? Here's how much it costs. Here we go. Um, but yeah, so at this point, what's happening is I, I, I'll be probably home doing a lot of commissions, but it's sad because we love the shows. We have people that have been like putting in orders for things to pick up at these shows. So now I have to go back and basically say to them, okay, do you want to just buy this and I'll ship it out to you? Because that's kind of where we're at at this point. I, I can't do anything about it aside from, you know, maybe see you at a show down the line. Um, it's 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 a little crazy but again like i said i still feel for all you guys that you know are in the production and things because now what's happening is you got shows and concert canceling all over the place corporate events are dying anything international was the problem but now it's just everything that's dropping so oh, yeah. it's kind of nuts I, f- I really feel for you guys oh yeah literally like everything's just canceling left and right and they're just canceling into the known future yeah and as far as uh pretty much anybody that does the corporate industry like i do uh we, we're all unemployed at this point you know yeah so uh i'm pretty sure i know a lot of my friends in the union are going to be going and looking for that unemployment check and yeah uh it's uh, it's really rough you know and uh, hopefully you know we stick together and we we can figure out some way to everybody to fucking make some money out there you know but it's uh it's gonna be rough for a second that's for sure and that's what i'm doing this for you know yeah you're building a whole you know you're doing the whole this whole business you're gonna build this off the ground so yeah this goes wild and then and then who knows you won't even need the other stuff hopefully hopefully you know hopefully we get some marketing dollars or something going on over here but you got to do something you know it's to it's it's take a risk and and get out there and put yourself out there and you know hopefully something good happens from it oh totally totally (coughs) yeah it's been good man 
It's been real good. So you brought a book to uh, show us? I brought I brought a few things. I mean, uh, here's the deal. I mean, I, I've been... Uh, just to give a little history about me. Uh, you know, you met me at House of Blues um, as a lighting director there. But, I mean, I've always been uh, somewhat of a... I, I, I won't say artist. But I, I try to draw. I try to do my own thing. I, I would say you know. artist. <laughs> well, I guess technically once you still getting paid, you're a professional artist, I guess. That's, that's the reality. But but I, I kind of always kept it as a hobby. And, uh, you know, so it got to be a point where I would do... You know, I was drawn since I was five years old. So my style really kind of came to, uh, you know, a head uh, because I was only doing it in my free time. Uh, I have to thank the powers that be. Somebody gave me a he- heads up and said one day, says, you got to go get an iPad. And I was like, for, for production stuff. And I was like, oh, it's perfect. I'll use it for the shows. I'll use it for like my plots so I can see stuff, you know, and the whole things. And then I thought one day I was like, what if, can I draw on this thing? And I started doodling on it. I, I was using my finger at first. I didn't even have a stylus, you know. And then, lo and behold, like, here we are now going into various generations of, of iPad. You know, they finally came up with the pencil and the programs and all that stuff. But at, back in the day, that was my that was my say, oh, well, I'll just draw. So I would sit at House of Blues when I was working at front of house and just draw. And then I'd have guys like like uh, like uh, you know, like Phil would look over and be like, you drew that? I'm like, yeah, I drew that, <laughs> man. That's, that's what I do, you know. Um, there was a nice bartender at House of Blues, Heather. I'm sure you know her. Yeah. She uh, she had said to me at one point, she said, hey, you should sell your art at the, one of these first Fridays with me. And I was like, nobody's going to buy my art. And she was like, no, do you never know. Bring, you know. bring some stuff. We'll make this happen. And so I went with her. And she had one of those outdoor, it was one of those outdoor events. Uh, it wasn't First Friday. It was uh, uh, It was one of those, uh, but it was in that vein. I forget what it was. It was uh, something like that, like on streets. That was it, Streets Vegas or something right. like that. You know, and I brought some of my stuff. And at the time, I was mostly doing like pin y stuff because I wasn't really, personally, I was afraid to do like fan art because everyone would be like, oh, you'll get in trouble if you draw like, you know, characters and stuff. They'll come after you. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just do pin-up stuff. And have oh, yeah, you get away with, with it from like parody law and stuff like that, right? <laughs> there is no laws. It's, it, you know what? I mean, here's the they don't really have a there's, leg to stand on. Here's huh? the deal: they can come after you at any point. They can come after you for anything. Yeah. If they don't like they don't like the cut of your jib. They can shut you down. the The best thing I've noticed at this point, having been selling my art now, is that I am just doing my best to be a nice free advertising for them. The amount of money I make as an artist, and I do okay, uh, is nothing compared to the amount of aggravation it would take them to come take me away from doing what I'm doing. Yeah. And if you times me by a million me's, because that's the deal, you get all these artists all over the Comic Cons and all the shows and all the industries, you know, it's 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 basically come down to that point. Now, here we are. I basically am now getting published in books for art books for different things. So here's something I brought. This is actually Netflix. I did a Stranger Things book and I'm actually now published with Netflix. Really? Oh yeah. This is this is you can see right on the top there. Netflix. That is amazing. This is their this is their book through Printed in Blood, which is a, a company that I, I started doing some stuff through that they we they had hun- hundreds of artists that basically like, you know, uh, submitted their art and they picked some of them to basically be uh, you know, to be put in the book and so I was like all right so I'll show you my piece and they actually took my piece they took a, a my uh, little blurb I wrote about my my connection to Stranger Things because I do I enjoy it I, I like the show oh, it's a great show it's a great um, show but I don't know if you could see yeah you can put it right in this camera right here in the front right, there we go does that, does that work uh, let's see it. I don't know if it's how's that there you go that's a little bit better so that's that's my piece and it's basically my rendition of kind of like the monsters playing like Dungeons and Dragons with the kids as like little miniatures and that whole thing, you know, and the upside down, you know, kind of okay. thing. And I had a lot of fun with it. But I mean, that's that's the first book that I've become published in. I now also have a book coming out in May that is uh, for Ghostbusters through, you know, through Paramount that I did a piece that's going to be in one of those, their books that's based, you know, through Warner Brothers. And then I've got approved for a book that I can't. I can't show a picture of yet, but there's a there's a, a, a Firefly book that I'm doing that has a has a, a piece that I'm doing for you know the, the the show Firefly that I'll be doing. Oh really? I heard um, um, Netflix might be bringing that back or something. Is it kind of something that's there's kind of talk? Like, there's talk. There's talk, and, and that's maybe this may be in culmination with some of that because you know because Fox is excited and they're trying to get a little more love out there. Oh. It's called uh, the book is called I Aim to Misbehave, which is perfect. Fun. Um, but yeah, it's it's another book that's through the same company, and I, you know, and I, I have a couple other things possibly. Come 
coming up down the line that I'm excited to be part of. But until they get revealed, I can't say boo. But you know, but it's fun. You know, it's one of those things. And honestly, it doesn't necessarily. I mean, don't get me wrong. I I don't make like uh, no one. I don't have like the Netflix people chasing me down to make tons of money off of that. But when people ask if I have something through Stranger Things and I show them this, they get excited and there you go. I uh, but. You know, I've got like a lot of pieces for all different forms of different fan cultures and pop cultures and, and, and even and even rock and roll stuff that I've done and, th- you know, just a little bit of everything. And so, you know, at this point, so when I bring this is like this is just a pr- nice example of, you know, what I do. You know, here I actually even brought I, here's like one of my medals. So you can see kind of like the idea of my art. Oh, the metal ones are great. You know? I love the metal ones. Definitely so, get, get, hit, it, hit it right on this camera right here. That other camera isn't so as good like, as that camera. So, like, this is, like, my swamp. Oh, yeah, look at it shine. And you can see how the light reflects off this. It really kind of brings on a life of its own. Yeah, your metal and, pieces are awesome. You know, and this is what I've kind of become known for. I mean, I, I do, you know, this is this is my canvas, you know. So when people see these, and they know that, like, these are limited editions. So I only do, like, 50 of each of these. They're all signed to numbers. Can do that, can do that crazy ah, noise. I love that sound. Noise. But, yeah, so, like... I stumbled across this. It was, this was like just a whole, this was, you know, if, if someone said to J, said Jerry, like if Jerry bumped into me like 20 years ago and said, you're going to do this, I'd be like, you're crazy. It doesn't make no sense. None of this. On metal? What? You know, and that's, and that was it. I, I had none of this. I had no idea this was even going to happen. And then, so what ended up happening was, is that I, like, and to go back to that story where I went with Heather to go do this, I didn't have metal. I had just, I just had my own painted pieces that I printed out myself that I put a little canvas on. I tried, I didn't sell one, didn't sell nothing all weekend. In fact, I, I was pissed because I was there alone. I, it was so weird because it was like, they actually gave me my own booth. They were so undersold on booths or whatever. So they gave me my own booth. So I'm there alone by myself with like a dozen pieces that were totally inappropriate for like families because they're all like pin up stuff and I'm at a family fair thing you know <laughs> I, you know I try I like I halfway through the wind started kicking up because you know how the wind starts kicking up in Vegas certain times of year so all my stuff started blowing around and then my uh, my friend Lori came to visit while I was there and to say hi to give me some support and I was like well I just want to get some food I haven't been able to eat because I was sitting there alone and I had nobody with me I went got a funnel cake and the wind blew it away and I was like oh like that was like we're out of here and I grabbed my stuff and I left so that was my first show experience did not go so well Uh, but uh they never do but yeah so from then I kind of just started thinking well wait a minute why don't I just start doing comic cons because that's kind of my I love comic books I used to go to San Diego as a you know as a pro from being in the you know from the makeup industry and as a and as a as as just being in the in, in entertainment industry I would go to get a pro badge and I would go to uh, San Diego for years as a guest and just go and enjoy the show and buy stuff you know and little to, again still would never think to to be I could be a guy selling art at a show like that ever and now here we are and that's what I do but it's it's, it's one of those things that all this stuff has made me me, you know. I got to come see you at Comic-Con. I've never been. My girl loves Comic-Con. Angela's a huge fan of the comic book. Well, you you saw me at that Rock and Shock show. I did see you a Rock, Rock and Shock, Shock. which so, was really cool. And again, that's kind of, and that just goes to show like how I could fit in so many different things. Like, you know, that's more of a rock and roll horror show. And of course, I got a lot of horror stuff that I like and rock and roll. And my, you know, my booth's all set up with lights and metal and, you know, and all that stuff. So oh, your so, booth is great at that Rock and Shock show, yeah. man. And that's so, just awesome. So that's that's the deal. That's what I bring to the table. And so, you know, we get told that, you know, we do all these shows and I'm getting told all the time, like we're one of the coolest things these shows have and stuff like that. And I'd have to agree. You know, we, we're really proud of it. We work really hard. And it's and, and it's because of it, because I have this, you know, 20 years of lighting and I have I have, a, you know, a good idea on how corporate events like to make their brand look good. So I put all that into my display. And then we have a cool display. And, yeah, you know. that is. I mean, that is one thing you guys really bring to the table is is you show up and your booth just destroys everybody else's booth. You got LED lighting going on, yeah. stuff's moving. You know, you're you're, you're yeah. you got up lighting on you got your on lights. Your, I got oh, the it's TV, just ridiculous, you got a hydraulic yeah. sixty five inch TV in the background. Oh, you, it, yeah, that's right. You were yeah, telling me you got yeah, this big so hydraulic TV. We actually have two TVs right now on a splitter, so that two sides of the booth are getting the constant feed of like my pieces rolling, and 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 you'll see like. Uh, like I actually have like all the different stuff that people get signed by the celebrities that'll pop up on the screen. So you're constantly seeing new stuff. It's actually worked good because what was happening is I have so many pieces now I can't put them all on display. So I figured, well, if I have a TV, at least they can see that. So that was, that's, that kind of works behind us, you know, but it's, you know, it's kind of crazy. 
That's awesome. Yeah. You know, ideally my, my dream is someday maybe do something like a video wall behind me or something being nuts. Just, but, but again, it still comes down to cost. I'm not, we can talk about know. that because <laughs> I mean, you know, I am doing a lot of the, uh, the live entertainment stuff right now. Totally. And, uh, I might've gotten some deals on some, uh, some video walls. Of course they're from, they're, they're from China. So it might take a second <laughs> to get them over here. Yeah. But, uh, did you see, did you ever see that video? They actually, you know, they, they have this one that looks like you just put it on a stand and it electronically cranks itself up in the air. Oh, really? It's, it's like, it's like they're, they're super thin. Cause yeah. that's the deal. Like at this point, if I go anything like that, I have to, it can't be too heavy duty. Obviously. Oh yeah. Cause, Cause I'm just a little guy. I need to fit in my little 10 by 20 booth and not be like a nightmare to the people around me and set up. So, you know, like no, that no, I, you can't be putting you know, panels up or no, anything exactly, like that. But I've no. seen the ones like some of the bands roll in with the little ones like, like that. A, it's like, yeah, you know, it's like those, a suitcase. You, it just you opens get it up. at Home Depot yeah. to be like, oh, this is the display for my yeah. company. Yeah. But instead it's just a fucking roll up LED wall. So that's kind of the next step for where I'm looking at. Because yeah. at this point, I that that I'm my backdrop is all just my prints anyway. So well, I mean, why don't you just go projection? Because you know? unfortunately, because to get the correct lumens, I think yeah, in, that's in, in, true. Because you got to realize they're not going to shut the lights off in the product in the convention center for me. I need it to be top top, and they, yeah. they put it all bright. So I'm basically going to get killed. What like ten thousand lumens? Uh, or exactly. Something and then it has to level. be front loaded somehow, which means it's not going to be sitting on you know ten feet away from my booth. It's going to have to yeah. be in somebody else's area to well, do it. Have you yeah. seen the new, um, we use them in uh, some of our shows uh, for corporate now. It's this small projector that has this this mirror system that reflects it backwards. And so it puts uh, it on an angle. Uh, and so it's literally, uh, it's, it, so that's it, you're cool. talking like uh, the fucking projectors, like maybe this far away from the screen. Uh. And then here's your projector. And it just flicks it right back. Wow, up. no, I did not. That's some cool stuff. It's really impressive technology. And the guys were like, oh, we've been doing this forever. I was like, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. I'm, I just, I just started no, seeing those. I've never heard of that either. That's that's pretty neat. And yeah. again, it's, it all comes down, you know, I, you know, I like to try and bring, you know, kind of cool stuff to the show to get people excited. After all said and done, though, it has to be, I have to, you know, I talk to people about my art. They like what they see. If they don't like the art, it doesn't matter how, you could light a turd as much as you want. If it's still a turd, no one's going to buy it at the end of the day. So Hopefully people connect to my art and get whatever. The funniest thing is I get, uh, because I come from this so differently than a lot of the artists I meet, a lot yeah. of these guys worked in the industry as from, from Marvel or DC and they're independent comic guys. So when they see somebody like me come on the scene, they don't know what to think because they, you know I use crazy colors that they never used before and I'm doing stuff on metal and I'm, you know, and I'm doing things a little more outrageous with the lights and the setup and I'm a little, and, you know, so, so, uh, at first, they didn't know what to think of me. Now I'm just a fixture, and they just kind of like, that's crazy Jerry with the crazy job. Friggin' Jerry and just blows yeah. us all away real but quick. But still, the funniest thing is, is I didn't realize how hard it was for people to realize until I would bring it up to them that I came from the industry I came from, you know, because most of the time these guys just think I'm just trying to draw people into my booth. They don't realize that I actually do have a lighting background. Yeah, so. you were a professional lighting director. Yeah, so, I mean, and you know? so now what's funny is like the whole Comic-Con industry you'll see people putting lights on their setups now more and more and they don't know what they're doing with it so they have these weird lights lighting their stuff I laugh because we look at stuff and I'm like Ugh, the colors are garish why are you doing that to your stuff or are people making their art look worse because of the lights they're putting like blue light on a warm tone stuff I, like, and I, get, I get all nervous like I look you know and then they just look at me and they just say oh Jerry with this crazy popping lights and I'm like you don't realize I'm using like that light because my color tones are all that primary so they pop the color they don't realize that so they just look at me like I'm just just crazy and that, that they could do it too and they just don't realize i'm like jared whatever yeah you can plug some lights in but it's like yeah that's not gonna look the same you exactly. know the color palette that you're familiar with yeah. and, and you're used to you know doing everything properly to fucking you know you know give there's it the right a, there's accent a lot of directors out there too and i'm sure like martin scorsese or somebody like that looks at them and goes yeah good luck at that. you know that oh yeah be, yeah good, good luck oh, lighting's everything i mean yeah. <laughs> doing this what i've I'm done sure here had a lot of to get to these four cameras yeah, and the lights could, yeah it's a, it, to get even close, it was a friggin' nightmare, man. I mean, talking I hours. I bet. Uh, and, uh, yeah, lighting's so important, man. Anyway, if you're just taking... People underestimate how much time it takes to light some stuff up. You know, and that's... And then, again, that's all that kind of stuff. We, you know, and again, I... 
I get people all day long as like, you know, how do I take this home with me? They like to see this, you know, and now luckily the nicest part is the technology is getting to the point where people could go to Amazon and buy stuff for themselves so they could set it up in their houses. You know, you got the tungsten U bulbs and things people stick in their house so they could change the colors of their bulbs in their house and stuff or, or the strips you can get. There's so many ways to do it so you can get a nice effect on your house if you want to do that same effect. So I get, I get people sending me little videos once in a while like they kind of, you know, did little lights around. Like, you know how they have the TVs with the lights coming out the back? Oh, yeah. They'll actually set their metals behind the TV so that it catches all the effects and stuff. Oh, and it looks nice. cool. So I get so many people sending me these beautiful pictures. I'm just like, thank you so much. I mean, I've, I, I'm very thankful because at this point, you know, like I said, we've got uh, our Facebook fan base is over 80,000 at this point or something. And, and we have people like on Instagram and, and social media all over that follow us. And you know, there's people that I, I have people like at every show now that come look forward to us. And it's so crazy. You know, it's like kind of like, wow, it's like, you know, think of in production, you spend your whole life trying to be hidden that nobody even knows you. Oh, yeah. You're invisible. And now it's like, I got to, I got to deal with these people. I got to talk to them. And that took me a while too. I was, I was very hard to like, like I, like Serenity used to, my girl Serenity used to laugh all the time about like how things like, it's like, you can't call your art shit. Like that was the number with like, so like, cause I'd be like, you like my shit? This is cool. And you'd be like, no, you can't refer to your art like that. It doesn't work. You know? So that was, I had to get over, I had to get a little more of that. And mind you, I still think of myself as especially even as an artist you know you don't want to come off as like you know do you you know this is this is amazing you have i I still try and respect the fact that people spend hard-earned money for stuff i don't want to overcharge people for things i like to give discounts to my return customers and 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 try and you know and try and take care of them you know that's the whole point it's a business you know so you try and make sure people appreciate you oh yeah you know I don't think I would be the same way. I think back to like the days when we were doing production. I don't feel like, I never felt like I'd be like, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a deal on the second job since you gave me the first job. It's like, no, the rates were still the same, man, because it's still the same reality. But, you know, it's a little different when you're dealing with like the public. Oh, know? yeah. And sales in general, you know. Oh, it's a whole. Sales is a different I'm, animal. I'm still, you know, luckily, I guess that's the one thing. I mean, it is my business. If I destroy it, it's my own fault. Yeah. But there's times where you deal with certain people, you just want to say, hey, you know, I can't, I cannot sell you anything you don't want anything i have you just want to talk about you know how important it is or if you had this thing or if you, had, you know i think every artist goes through this if somebody walks up to your booth goes if you only had this i would buy it in a minute and it's like i'm one of those people now that's getting the point where i go over 600 pieces yeah people better watch their mouths when they ask for that because most of the time i'll pull it out on them because they'll say oh if you only had like chucky oh you mean like this and there's then, three different versions of chucky yeah, i've like done chucky you know right it's like, what are you talking so about it's bro? Like, dude it's right here you ready to pay oh oh, oh no i was just kidding around like sorry you know don't play that game with me i i have a lot of this stuff yeah i'm it's actually like, i do commissions by the way I, well right? that's it too. Like, and you know, got, you get on the list i get people all day long and be like well if you don't have I mean, if you don't have it i could draw for you you just might have to wait a little bit and then you know and that's a whole other thing i mean there's a whole there's a whole other angle i feel like unfortunately i feel like a lot of people in the artist industry don't know how to don't know how to treat themselves i feel like they undercharge oh yeah uh, i have too many artists i feel like they're just like, desperate to sell it there's that i guess maybe and i just feel like there's that whole thing that they just don't know their own worth i mean it's like yeah i i, I sell limited edition pieces all day long you know and again when i started I, there was a point of me thinking well uh, is anyone gonna pay like the price i want for this i don't even know but i you know once you get realizing that you're doing something that you know you put the work in and it's not even just the time it took me to draw the piece it's the time it took me as an artist to learn how to draw that piece so that's where you have to get into that mindset i feel i feel a lot of guys don't i feel like and even and i'll be honest with you even in production i feel like that was problems with that i feel like too many guys that were that were stagehands or production people that were lighting directors that would be like undercut other guys just to get the job and it's like oh yeah that's not good you you do realize that you know when i say i wouldn't get out of bed for x amount of dollars it wasn't because i was trying to be a, a blowhard i was protecting the industry of saying this is what it's worth to do what i do yeah i'm protecting you bro it's I, like yeah. i'm making sure you get the same money i get and if, if we all go together and say no man this yeah. is this is 500 or 600 dollars yeah. gotta stick together to yeah. do this job yeah. and we all say it they uh, they, they, they have to pay it. they have to pay it is it what it, are you gonna do you're that. gonna not get someone to do it yeah no, no you're gonna pay it's it. too many and you know and again so like i'd be next to like i'll sit at shows next to guys that are drawing like you know hand-drawn full comic you know sketches that you know somebody should sell at least a cup you know 50 to 100 bucks for and they're giving away for like 20 bucks and i'm like Jeez. I, and, and, but and that's the sad thing is I'd look over and be like, dude, you're undercharging. What are you doing to yourself? And they'd be like, well, you know, you charge so much, but it's like, 
but it's that's the difference. I charge so much because I'm worth it. Yeah. If you're not worth it, that's fine. If you feel like you don't deserve it, that's fine. But there is a there's a you spending hours on stuff. I mean, I I don't even draw at shows. There's guys that do that whole end of things. I can't do that. I can't. I don't like sitting under pressure and having somebody watching me as I draw a picture. I, I can't do. You're that stuff. there to sell anyways, yeah. man. I, well, we're too busy to. We're too busy. I yeah. look at guys that are sitting there with their head and they're they're drawing, and I'm, I'm like, I got I'm got selling. Me, and my yeah. girl are working nonstop most of the time at these shows talking and selling so it's it's a you know it's a hustle as itself but because you got to keep going uh, and, and but there's so many i've learned so many weird little things that you just don't even think about as an as a as a as a selling a selling person or a, or as a you know because it's just a way of getting to know people talking to them and things like that it's just weird you know oh yeah man you, know, you got to be on at those things though man people will walk right freaking by you at those booths and i've i've yeah. been in the position where you're sitting there trying to like Get people to, to anybody. Hey, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm like here all day long, man. I just want to sell one thing, please. You know, and it's just like people ignore you. They'll blindside right through you. And uh, you ain't out there hustling. I, I feel like it's gotten to the point that we kind of had a, you know, you, you, you almost got to be afraid, not afraid to like be ignored. Yeah. Because what happens is, is that like I get people all day long. They think that like while I'm at the show. If I don't sell something to them, they don't realize that I got 30 more shows that year that I'm going to go sell this thing to. So if they, you know, I'll get people trying to, you know, cut me down in prices and things. And I'll be like, no, dude, it doesn't matter. If you're not yeah. buying it, the guy next week's going to buy. It. And especially with my limited edition stuff, I explain all day long. Like there's times I'll say, but like, there's only 10 of these left in existence. It'll never be more than 50 yeah. of these in the world. I only do 50 of each of my limited edition metal prints. And that's more. smart, by the way. You know what? Again, it's something that I started doing because I'm a collector. I collect comic books. I collect statues. Yeah. I collect things. And when I think about it as an art, as, as a collector, I want it to be unique. Oh, yeah. So to my, my mind, I was like, all right, well, I'm going to do it this way. And that's the way I'm going to do. It. Now, the funniest thing is that, again, a lot of artists I, that I do shows with don't think of that stuff or because now, you know, just because I do art on metal, now the metal's taken off. Like, there's like 20 to 30 other people that sell art on metal at the shows that I do. Not really. Now, they don't do it like I do. Their art's obviously not the same. Everyone's art is different. Not everyone does the same quality, the same contrast. Even the company I work through doesn't do all the metal. There's other metal companies out there doing their own brand of metal art. And... Uh, my guy does such a good job. He's he's the number. He's the one who started it with, you know, like I actually invested in his company so he could do the big medals with me and type things. And we've been together forever. Um, but uh, it's one of those things where I feel like too many artists are afraid if they limit something, if they have something good, that they'll actually never be able to sell something else again. You get what I'm saying? Like, like I've, yeah. I've actually talked to a couple artists that have had some really like popular pieces and they're like, well, I'm afraid I've, that was my one hit wonder. And if I stop selling that piece, I'll never sell another one. Now me, I always look at it like this. I sell one, I draw it, it goes down. I could draw another one. It's not the end of the world. If somebody likes that piece, I could do another one in that. Like I'm on yeah. like three toothless pieces because people love how to train your dragon. I'm on, you know, you know, multiple Star Wars pieces. Like every time something retires, I at least know what was popular. And I could go, all right, well, if I need to draw another version of that, I could go back to that. Like Boba Fett. Like everyone loves freaking Boba Fett. Who doesn't love Boba Fett? And I'm like, I've got like six Boba Fett pieces that have all retired one after the next. I like, they keep going and I just every time I do one someone's like is this one going to be retired and then I'm like yep there is there's another one's gone the nice thing I did and this was kind of my the one thing I did that that that, uh, that we do is like when I retire my pieces I I sell them on my comic size medals uh, I think I got one of those here actually Nice, 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 nice. I brought a little bit of everything. I was like show and tell. Ah. So this is an example. This is my Deadpool piece. This has been retired for quite a while. But here's oh, my look at that. Deb. That's nice. Yeah. So, and again, when I did this piece, this was before the movie came out even. I did this piece because I, I was a comic book fan. I wanted to do a cool Deadpool piece. So I did this piece. And, uh, of course, all 50 of the large sold out. So we sell it on a comic size. So that's why I do it this way. It was like, you know, it's not limited. They're open-ended. Because the whole point of it was when I did these, I was like, I felt bad that people would miss out on the cool medals. So yeah. I was like, well, how do I do this without like pissing off my collectors? So I was like, all right, I'll do, I'll do comic size medals. And at the time, I think I had 
maybe like a couple of these, you know? Yeah. Now I think about 200 of my pieces are on the, the comic size. The comic size is great because yeah. people have to split. My, Angelo has this whole set of shelves yeah, that yeah. it's just it's all comics. Oh, yeah. No, totally. Yeah. It's perfect size it's and all that. the exact size. So it's like they can go right in the middle of it, you know? Exactly. And it's so it's like, amazing. So there's so so we're, as a business, I think we were smart about how to do it for ourselves and what works for us. And not, not necessarily everything's going to work for everybody. Yeah, that works for me. And, uh, and I get people all day that you know, oh, was this on the small yet? Because I have people that collect the small ones, and then I have people oh, they that just, only they collect the large the ones. ones. So uh, they have to wait until yeah. one's retired and stuff. Like I get people. I, it's so crazy how many people we got with certain things. So it's 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 kind of like a, you know, they're chasing them or something. You know, they they have their own thing but at the same time it's like it's as as an artist it's weird there you know, to be ch like because i have artists that i collect stuff from that i buy from them like, like to think that there's people out there collecting for me it's amazing you know Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, your art's amazing, though. I mean, I, I really am a fan of, of what you do. I think what you do is just incredible, man. Like, Thank it really you. is. Well, and you can see, when you look at it, like, it's, it's hard to not notice that I came from, like, the production industry. You can see the lighting in the piece. Because I work hard on, like, if you look at even all my pieces, you'll see, like, the light glares, the colors, the way the tones, like, it's like some kind of lighting is hitting it a certain way in certain way. Like, I try to make all my pieces, and this is, like, somebody asked me to, like, kind of sum up my style. Yeah. And I said, picture every character that is the subject to my stuff is on stage at a rock concert somewhere ah. and that's kind of the deal because you see the lighting is coming from different colors and things that, you know and it's just and it's coming from the right direction oh yeah I like that where your lights you, well, you actually yeah. have your light coming from a direction that's a whole and that's another thing you'd be surprised how many artists I see that don't understand lighting yeah. and they try and put in their pieces and I watch and I'm looking like like what is that that light's pointing the wrong way that doesn't even make sense and I you know of course you don't want to be mean so you just kind of like you know, just keep it to myself but there's a lot of people that don't know how to light things and it's a whole different angle i mean you know, oh yeah it's, it's super it, important to it, the actual it, image looking like an image your brain goes something's off about this and a lot of times you can't tell what it is and it's no, the totally. fact that the shadows are but the light's coming from here yep. and yeah yeah it just doesn't make any sense to anybody. well and you know and, and like i try and put like i you know and i it's it's i even think a little bit almost like uh like 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 tv wise like i got my key lights certain ways and it's like the, the eyes of the light are getting hit with the key light sometimes and so you got certain sublight and backlight and things like that and all that stuff comes into play and it's fun it's fun as an artist to be able to bring that to the forefront you know and do that um and again that's that's what makes me me that's my thing i mean i guess really when people start wondering what's your thing well, that's my thing i do it that way so you know yeah, it, it comes out fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. So, Thank you. Yeah, speaking of uh, doing, like, your rock and roll stuff, man, I mean, I know you got killer stories. I mean, me and you personally have killer stories <sighs> of some amazing, amazing bands that we've worked with. <sighs> but, uh, and, I, and yeah, yeah, dude, I know, right? Like, I'm the same way. It's the second someone brings it up, you go, well, I know that I've worked with so many people but yeah. Yeah, until you name I, one i can think i mean i can think of a couple know. of stories offhand that were some that were some doozy ones i can think of one that i tell Did, uh, that is your story you and i and i what? is it the cake I, story it's the cake <laughs> story i don't oh and God. i don't take credit for it i go my buddy jerry oh dude oh no. man well I, you want me to i'll tell you the tell cake the cakes yeah fuck tell, those guys I, man I, you know i know no, I, no. We, we all love dude, cake i look at shame. i was you know? i love that band. i'm a fan of I them was too a big fan and i was so excited that i was lighting them for the first time and it was like one of those deals where i was like okay i'm gonna light these guys i knew the songs i knew all the music i had all these I was making cues up to do it. And uh, the one thing that, that they that they had a request for was they wanted a mirror ball that had to be that had to be controlled by the lead singer. So that's already kind of weird because usually they don't do that. Um, so he had a foot pedal that he had to control that he would turn the, the lights that would hit the mirror ball on. Now, most mirror balls don't have like a lot of speed with them. It's on or off. That's pretty much the deal unless you're starting to get a little more high tech and stuff. But I set up the mirror ball for them. I set up a couple lights that were on the speaker stacks on the side of the stage to hit the mirror ball so it would look beautiful. And he, it was wired in. So if he stepped on his little thing, that was great. They only had, they had no other production for like, they, they had their, their, their manager to the front of house. And I don't know who did, uh, I think our guy did, did, did monitors, but, um, they had a backdrop. That was really it. A, a cute little backdrop. It, had, it was, and it was nice because it would take color. Because it had a lot of different, it was like a very RGB kind of backdrop. So if I put different colors around, it would look cool. 
But uh, so we set this thing up and I'm, I'm ready to go. And the first th- the, the beginning of it where I knew this was going to go to hell in a handbasket was that they go out for sound check and he goes out to try the to try the mirror ball. And he steps on the thing and it goes on and he looks and he goes and he and he literally said this. He's like, is there no one here that can make this mirror ball spin any faster? <laughs> and I was like, son of a bitch. And I'm like, I was like, this is the way this is going to go down. Right. And I was like. I, you know, and I pretty much said to this guy, I said, you, you got two speeds. It's got this one and you're going to hate the other one because the other one's nothing because that's it. It's on or off, dude. It's a mirror ball. It's a simple motor. It wasn't anything. You guys did not pay for anything. This is what we had in house. So the show begins. Oh, and uh, and of course, like half of the th- like I start doing the show and maybe one song in like he goes off stage to go scream at the monitor guy which is to scream at the front of house guy to go scream at me of and course. he basically says something like it's too bright on stage you can't do the, too much no movement no movement at all just just do you know static looks and I was like alright cool deal no, that's alright and I had like Lico's pointed at all the band members you know because that's usually what you do you have a key on each guy and then you use the different colors to you know sculpt the rest of the stage and I had some light on the backdrop to make it look cool and you know if it was you know my theory was if, if the show was cool as if the songs are good I might have a little movement going because that's what I like to do but honestly that's what I do that's when you you know if you don't if you have most shows if you like most bands if you have a certain view you want for a for a lighting guy you bring your own guy you don't expect the guy who's you know running the house to be like oh well you're gonna know exactly what I want you know it doesn't work that way so anyway so uh so the show's beginning, and of course, you know, the, the audience doesn't really notice. They just they, they don't know what he's doing. So it, they, it just goes on. So the, the guy tells me, he says, look, they want it darker. It's too bright on stage. I'm like, all right, fine. I'll start lowering it, start lowering it. Um, and of course, as I'm lowering their intensities, it's hard to see them. You know, it's the band. People came to the show to see the band. It's getting harder to see the band. And I think yeah, I was. Not, you're not this fucking disco <sighs> ball, and, right? And, and, and literally what he would do is he would kick the mirror ball on. Everyone, every song, he would just kick the mirror ball on, you know, whatever his heart content, and that was great. But yeah. I was like, whatever. That's if that's his love, that's what he wants. Great. But lo and behold, he just starts like after like a couple songs in, and after the 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 the, the front of house guy was like, "You're gonna do this isn't about you." He pretty the, the front of house the, the the production manager guy just said, "This isn't about you. It's about them. You do whatever he says." And I was just like, I'm just trying my best to make the show look cool, dude. I'm like, you, you have nothing on at this point. There's like no light on. You want to just sit in the dark? That's cool. He's like, you do what he wants, no matter what he says. So finally, here we are about four songs in, and he gets on the the, guy at the, the lead singer at the end of the song says, I guess I can't get along with any of these lighting guys in any of these houses here. Can we just have no lights? <laughs> of which I just was like, Sure. And I just kill all the friggin' lights on the stage, <laughs> uh, of which the only thing on is the mirror ball and the leak goes for the mirror ball, of which the guy next to me, the front of house guy, who's their banner manager, realized he just, you know, sucked it in, basically, because he just made, you know, he just pretty much made his own problem. <laughs> and I just said, I did what I want. And I just, I, I literally shoved, I shut everything off. I stood back and put my arms folded because I wasn't going to leave. And I just stood there and watched. And basically, they were in the dark. They were totally in the dark, except for a mirror ball, spinning mirror ball lights around the whole room there for the next, I don't know, hour, hour and a half. Um, and then finally, the, produ- the front of house production guy comes over to me because he now realizes what he's done and says, look, I'm sorry for being abrupt with you, but can you put a little light on the drummer because he has no light on him? And I was like, oh, you want light now? Oh, okay. So I was like, you know what? I'm a, I'm a gracious guy. And I brought the, the light on the drummer up like 10%, which looked like this ghosting drummer and the rest of them in the dark with a mirror ball just spinning for the whole show. <laughs> and that was the way the show went down, the whole show. Um, at the end of the show, the funniest thing is, is like, the production manager guy looked at me and was like, we always have problems with the lighting guys. I'm really sorry for being a problem. I was like, you know what that means? That means you need to get your own lighting guy because I can't read this guy's mind. And if he's a jerk, that's on him. I did my best to give you guys a good show. Oh, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, he's an asshole. He just lost a fan because I was actually a fan of the band. And you're stupid for basically doing that. Of which I basically walked on stage and, and like, 
Brian Brian Thomas, the production manager, was still there, and he was like, yeah. he came right up to me. He's like, "Have a have a hard day, huh?" He's like, "Do you need a drink?" I was like, "I was like, I don't, I don't drink, but I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. It's just a shame that this had to go this way." You know, it was kind of one of those deals. But yeah, I mean, and that's the way it was. It was some shows. You never say two words to the, the people and you do a show best you can and they move on. Mm -hmm. Some shows, you know, as you know, they bring their own lighty guy and I'm not I'm out of the equation. I just set it up and do my thing. Which is great. And, and in some shows I did whatever the hell I wanted and if they liked you know, like David Lee Roth came and hugged me after his show because oh, basically yeah. I did an eighties rock show for him and he was so busy going I'm sure he was dealing with other lighting people in other venues that didn't know anything about like Van Halen or any of that stuff. All these young kids that are getting paid minimum wage to work at House of Blues or something like that so they probably lighten him like he was like a you know like a nine inch nails concert or something like that and you know and he was like no this was perfect the pinks and the blue and he was like he was like it's greatest show Fucking i've seen rock, and that you guy's go. amazing so there you go so that's the way my life was in that and so trust me and that's the other thing that's funny having going from that into this where it's like i get a lot of people don't realize that i actually loved what i did i enjoyed being a lighting director i never had a problem with it i did this i did you know did corporate event stuff but you know it was a fun gig I like this because this is more me. This is my thing. I get to do it my way. You know, it's the beautiful thing of doing it that way. But it's all put together. It all connects. You yeah. Know? Like even I know you were asking at one point before we, we were doing this about makeup effects because I did a little bit of makeup effects. I am very um, interested in the makeup effects. Actually, you know, I'm starting to do a lot of uh, green screen work and movies and gotcha. TV show shit. It's going to be a lot of fun. I, uh, you know, and again, uh, th if you if, if someone was to ask a. Yeah. If someone was to ask a young Jerry, like, at, like, 10 or 12, like, what he'd be doing, Jerry would be like, I'd be making monsters for Hollywood. That was Jerry. That was that was me. Adjusting camera angles over here. Sorry oh, about cool, that, Jerry. Jerry. You know what I mean? The tech, you know, tech. Trying to make my shots look a little bit better. No, you're good. Do your thing, man. Do what you got to do. I know I'm. I'm, I'm I'm emotional. I move a lot. So right. No, uh, you're also my guinea pig, right? This is a, this is kind of like a maiden voyage for me over here. Yeah. So sorry for interrupting. So so your makeup effects, man. I am. Yeah. I'm very interested in your makeup effects. Well, like for me, I started as a young kid. I was I was looking to mess around with that stuff, and it was easy because that was that to me was something when like I I got books uh, like of Dick Smith. Tom Savini, um, you know, uh, all these different makeup books. And I was like, this is cool. I could do my own stuff. And they had things that were like how to take, you know, everything from like taking like, you know, coffee stained napkins and gluing it on your face and make it look like a zombie type thing to like, you know, making your own blood and dealing with all the different old school stuff and then going into like the newer stuff like prosthetics and things like that. I, um, I knew I was going to do this somehow. I, you know, it was just kind of one of those things. And I used to, like, take my brother and I'd make him all up in different makeups and things. And I would do weird shit, like, you know, take pictures of him, like, make it look like a snake was burrowing out of his cheek and, oh, nice. you know, uh, stuff like that. But then, so when I graduated, my folks were very big on saying I had to get an education. So that's where I went and did lighting for a degree. I went to, I got a lighting degree in uh, Ithaca College. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah, I did the whole thing. And it was fun. I met a lot of great people. And, uh, you know, I, it was more theater than rock and roll, obviously. And that's, it, that's, it a, that's funny to me whenever your parents are like, you got to go get a real job. And you're like, I'm gonna go be a lighting director. Well, and, and, well, and at the time, and that's most the, people, it's like that's, that's a ridiculous job to go try to get. It did, and they gave me a, they gave me a scholarships. They they took care. Like I actually did well because I had been working in theater for years. When yeah, I was you know, but I always wanted to do the makeup effects thing. So even in there was no real classes for that in college. You really couldn't do like you know. But I actually, yeah, I, mean, I, I mean, think I think in my senior year, I laughed because they let you do like your own creative study thing, and I made one up for makeup effects I almost killed my friend because I did like a full head cast on him without really knowing how to do it and I almost killed him because oh, did I, you like, not like put the straws in his I, nose I so he couldn't I breathe didn't do the straws. <laughs> I literally I, like I lit I left a little slit I think for his mouth and he had uh, it was something weird it was something like he had a sinus or something going on where he was like getting because 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 yeah. the way the um the alginate's super cold and the uh, plaster bandages are super hot. So he was getting like, he literally almost passed out from the from the heat and it kind of messed him up. But it was a cool <laughs> cast. It looked great. Oh, okay. Um, as long as the cast came yeah, out good. Exactly. I mean, you know, it's got to yeah. look good. So that was that was kind of like my beginnings of all that. And then and then after college, I uh, I decided to go to Hollywood and I, I did the, they had a Joe Blasco school, which was like, that's that was that was the big deal. I did Joe Blasco's 10 week course on makeup effects. And I, you know, they, you get a whole reel and you 
do all this stuff. And, you know, and I did. I, I loved it. I was my problem was is that I had health issues, so I couldn't stay out there uh, and do it the way I wanted to. And at the same time, I know it's so lame to say, but I had like a girlfriend back east at the time and I was like missing her and all this sad stuff. Ah, so all it's this life, stuff, man, it's life. So all the life stuff got in the way and it didn't allow me because I was there were before I left, I had even gotten on a couple small sets as a, an assistant makeup artist. And I, and they knew that I had the guys that I dealt with at Joe Blasco. They knew that I had like the interest. Cause I was like, I was over the top. Everything I did was over the top. Mm. So they knew that I, you know, but at the same time, the hard part, and I and I do, I think it's a hard thing because you got the whole 3D effect now meshing into a lot of that. Uh, the film industry, it wasn't a lot of money to me making doing as of that. So it was like it was, it would have been one of those deals where the kind of money, even as a production guy, you make is yeah. not the same you make as a makeup effects artist. Because I did a lot of independent films in New York when I went back home, and and I never got, I got nothing. I would get paid like a kit fee, and it was like a hundred bucks for a week for weeks of work going into Manhattan and spending money Jesus. and product and. You you know, and you're trying to do the right thing, but you're like, you know, how am I supposed to argue I'm worth more because I'm just a newbie at this stuff and, you know, those kind of things. Oh, yeah, man. Um, I remember trying to come up in, in audio world, man. It was a mess. So so that's kind of one of those deals. I think I, I, I'd like to say I loved it all because, again, it taught me as an artist, it taught me about how skin texture works, how tones work, how, how certain colors look good together on skin tones and, and don't look good together and, things, you know, all these different things, which is kind of funny because all this stuff I feel was kind of prepping me to be uh, a, the artist I am now. Yeah. It's just a different way. Um, so, I, but I do. I always love makeup. Effect. I'm never like, like, and I'll t I got to meet Tom Savini once upon a time at one of the, at a horror show that I did. Oh, really? So that was, that was badass cool because there's somewhere, there's yeah. a, uh, somewhere on my page is like a picture of me with, uh, I, I told him just, I said, dude, you're like one of my, one of my, big all-time favorite like guys in the industry uh give me a pick anything and he bought like, he, he took one of my beetlejuice pieces and i was like ah. please thank you that's so cool and i and then and, and the, the thing that meant more to me about what a class act he is because there's people some people that love him some people that say he could be a pain in the ass as yeah. as i thought he was nothing but nice is that he came up to me at another show remembered me and asked was this a good show to do so he could maybe do it in the future too so i thought that was the coolest thing in the world oh that's like, awesome oh, that's such a nice little memory thing right for, uh, to say so. he can he, he considered you a, a human being instead of just like something well, that exactly. was in his Another reality artist, for you know, a moment yeah no well yeah, that's and there's I, a difference between well, and I will how say, people are treated by celebrities well that's a whole other thing too i mean let's be honest i mean in production we deal with a lot of celebrities oh yeah we deal with people in different so that was something that's another thing like ideally even like the in the in at the shows selling my art there's times where a lot of the people will be like oh my god jason momoa is here somebody's here it's like i don't care he's just a guy and if somebody wants to buy my art to go get signed by him that's cool but that is not i'm not i'm not ogling him or, or you know the guys that yeah, the guys that i get excited about or people that go like what like i get more excited about this meeting like a tom savini than caring about like you know than than jason momoa and again i've had jason momoa come up to my booth and be like you know he's towering over me and we both be like i'd be like hey how's it going dude you know i don't care but it's nice to see those people it's nice if they do well and i'm glad that they like my art if they see it i've had a lot of celebrities start coming by my booths to see that what they've been signing this all weekend and what do they know like i actually had a good story i had a um, uh, Ian McDermott. Oh, okay. Um, Emperor Palpatine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this was before the new movie, obviously. This was a few years back, but I had done a, a you know, a, a piece of, uh, you know, the, the emperor and uh, people were buying them and go get signed by him like all weekend so he actually got up and he came to my booth but he was escorted by like the 501st and the cops and all these people dressed so like there was this entourage shutting down the entire artist alley so he can come up to me to just be like uh, are you so the guy great. who drew this and I'm like yeah so there's a picture with me and him together and he was so cool you know so like you know it's those kind of things you know that's awesome yeah, that is awesome. Yeah, I I I noticed that whenever I was uh, at the booth with you, uh, what out in Boston, man, it's like everybody's just like, all these people are actually here who played these characters, and it's like I have to get them from you know you have the, obviously the best art out of all the stuff uh -huh. that anybody's selling around there. It's just it really is not to fucking jerk you off, but it's by no Thank comparison, you. man. Thank you. You got to get that signed by the man. It was well, it was fantastic watching everybody just like standing in line with yep. all of your metal pieces getting signed by all the people who played them. Well, and that's, the, again, it goes back to that same collectability. I, I get people all day, and they're like, well, if you get this piece, there's only 50 of these in the world. Now you go get this piece signed by the guy who's in the picture. Now you got a one in a million. And they go, oh. 
the next light bulb clicks yeah. in and next thing you know they're running back to me with the signed picture going look look because I, I don't do it myself I don't really chase these things myself but I have people all day that do and I say if you get it yeah come on back I'd love to see it I'm sure as hell interested so we're all connected that way you know and it kind of works out oh yeah I got the uh, the Friday the 13th one signed I wasn't able to get the screen one signed uh, it was what was it Skeet Orange yeah, and Matthew yeah, Lillard yeah. were there yeah but I was doing some stuff with the band and I had some I had some other bull stuff I had to do with the band so I wasn't able to make it happen no. but uh, but yeah no I love to do the Friday the 13th one I should, it's awesome so, do you have do you have the large one I have, have the, the I, have, one? I have the full the, dude the, the, size like that yeah one all right 50 there. of those are gone man i'm glad oh really yeah totally, nice dude. Yeah, nice nice cool. yeah no i love those dude i love i show that yeah, shit oh, off to people I people are you, like that's uh, here's fucking a, here's crazy a good story looking. um the guy who played uh the guy who's always known for playing jason uh what's his name oh christ uh um christ there's a multiple there was yeah them, there was a bunch but, of them, but uh yeah, i was at a show with uh with with like three jasons and i have my muppet mashups that i do I had yeah. like horror Muppet mashup. So I had like a Swedish, I have a Swedish chef that's Jason. And the title of the piece is like him with a big ax going like ch -ch -ch bork, 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 you know? Bork, bork, bork. So, so that's the piece. So uh, I want to say, oh my God, his name's escaping me. Uh, yeah, if you just say who played Jason, the, the name's going to pop. I mean, like, there's like. I got it right here. Uh, Kane Hodder. Kane Hodder is the main one. He was the yeah. main guy, and then there was another guy. That's uh, uh oh Christ. He was the guy who played C.J. Graham. No, it wasn't. Uh, Richard Brooker. No. Um, Warrington Gillette. No. Ari Lemon. No. Ken Kurzinger. No. Uh, damn, so hell of people play Jason Moore. Steve it? Dash. No. Ted White. No. Christ. Hmm. He also played Predator. I'm trying to think of his name. Uh, he also played Predator. Yeah, Dick uh, Wind. No. Tim Murkovich. No. Let's see who played the Predator. Let's look it up. I didn't realize that many different people yeah. played Jason like, Voorhees. And, but, and, you know. Let's see here. I think he might have played Jason with the Jason Freddy one or something like that. So that's. Oh, okay. Might have right. been that, which is kind of its own little shit. But I, I, I can't remember the name. He's a tall, bald guy. He's a really nice guy, though. You see him at everything. He also did a. He also. A, Christ, what's his name? I feel so bad because he's like in my. F I could probably, you know what? I actually have. Let me see. Kevin Peter Hall? No, it's not even him. Uh, let me. I'm so sorry. Let me look this up here for a second. I have That's it all right. That's all right, man. You know, it's podcast is what happens on him sometimes. We get on a sidetrack here. I have. I have like in my folder of all these different guys too. So I actually have a picture with, with him in there. So I should be able to see it quick. It's TV folder. Uh, celebrities with title. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's see. No. Derek Mears. Richard Derek Brady. Mears. That's it was Derek, Derek Mears. Mears. So it was Derek Mears and Kane there Hodder. Is. Oh, that was the a, that was the guy I met at. Uh, he was at Rock and Shock. Yeah, wasn't yeah, he? yeah. I his so, face looks familiar. I think he's the one who signed my. Look here. I'll show you. Here. He's the one who signed my, my Friday the Thirteenth one. Oh, look at that. Is that cool? Tom Savini's amazing, man. He's such a good guy. Anyway, so. Anyway, um, so such great there, special I, effects I, he used to and do. And I figured what I was, what I would do is I don't really chase for celebrity signatures and shit. Yeah. But what I did with my horror Muppet mashups that I like to do, I basically thought it was hilarious to get those signed by the celebrities. So I actually have like, you know, my my house of a thousand wakas. Fozzie is signed by uh, what's his face that died. Uh, the, um, the guy, who, uh, the guy who played Captain Spaulding. Um, Oh, oh Christ, yeah, really? What I'm talking about. So I actually got one signed by him, which is hilarious, and that's like one of my prizes I hold on to. But so I brought oh, yeah, it up. No, Captain Spaulding, yeah, Sid Haig. Sid Haig, exactly. Yeah. So I actually brought the the Muppet one to to the guys for you know you got you got the Kane Hodder and you got Derek Mears together, and I was like, look, I'd like you to sign my my Muppet mashup, and Kane Hodder didn't get it. He was like, "What is it? I don't get this." You I was like, he's, like, "He's like, Jason is in Swedish." I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was just, <laughs> and Derek was like, "It's a fucking Muppet. What are you talking about?" Yeah, I mean, he's like the on. Muppets. He's like, "Do it's you know who joke, Swedish man. chef is? It's a mashup." And he was like, "He's like, oh, okay." He, he, like you could tell, yeah. it just. I was just like looking at the two of them. I don't know. I was I was like, like, why is this funny? I, I was like, I don't get it. I don't care. You know, yes, that's Kane Harder for you. But I was like, that was hilarious. That's funny, man. I actually had uh, Roddy McDowell, uh, not Roddy McDowell. Um. Shit. Uh, who's the guy from uh, um, Clockwork Orange? Uh, 
Ooh. It's Mac- Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm McDowell. Okay. I actually have an Oscar the Grouch mashup with, with the Clockwork. It's called the Clockwork Oscar piece I did. Oh, really? And I actually met him, and I was like, I wanted to get one signed. And it was hilarious, because like, he's sitting there you know, all seriously signing things at the show. And uh, I, I pushed it on the table, and I was like, I got one for you. As long, I'll give it to you, obviously, if you sign one for me. <laughs> and he wouldn't even say a word. He kind of just put it to the He looked at it. You could tell he looked at it and he put it to the side and then signed mine and just gave it to me and like kind of motioned me away. He's like, I'll, I don't know if I like this or not, but uh, yeah, someone will like. I'll, I'll figure this out later. Yeah, it was but, hilarious. You know, I, I was like, all right, that's cool. Well, at least I got my way on that one. So, oh, uh, that's fucking great, right there, man. Apparently, uh, what's her face from The Exorcist? Um, what's the name of her? What's her name? Uh, Ellen, uh, the, the the little girl from The Exorcist, that's right. like grown up now. Um, she is. Uh, she does not. She doesn't does not like a lot of things of her likeness and she gets very particular linda blair linda blair and shit so, yeah. so for the longest time i've had people like grab those muppets i have a muppet like like that's like of a muppet oh. doing the spitting pea soup thing and all that stuff <laughs> and they bring it to her to get signed and she kind of like kind of like signs it like, oh, like oh, she that. should spit on it or something it's like that she's like i spit on your fucking mother's like, brain i know it's just funny so so that's so again that's, that's the beautiful thing is like that's that's what i've contributed is i have all these horror muppets mashups I've done that are my own little sick children I've done it so it's kind of funny right I mean how do you I mean if you're the exorcist chick you have the best signatures in the world don't you you just get to write fucking all the horrible shit coming out of your fucking I get, mouth you know what I think I hate to say it but I think she doesn't want to be known only for that and unfortunately that's all she's kind of known for and I think it kind of I, yeah, I, think well, that's, I mean you, you gotta, gotta do pigeonhole. other things you, you gotta know, do uh, other things I, I, you know I'll give you a good exa- I'll give you a prime example I, we were just a show uh, I did a a uh, Toy Story piece uh, that I did, which was like mashup between Jurassic Park with the Toy Story Rex. Oh from, yeah, from, that's from, so great! I love so, that. So, so I actually was at a show, and uh, the voice actor for Rex was there. He's the guy who's the inconceivable guy, you know. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so he, um, his, he wanted one of the pieces. He loved it, and so he sent his guy over to to get me. To get one, I basically sent it over to get one, and I said I'm going to meet him, or he, yeah, to, so he could have it. That's yeah. my goal. That's my giving it to you, as you're going to give me a chance to meet him. But he was like, "Don't, don't say inconceivable. He doesn't, he doesn't care much for that anymore. It's been done a little too much. So, so. much. It's so, his pet peeve. Yeah. So apparently, I was like, I was like cool about it, but I was like, uh, yeah, I can only imagine how many people walk up to him on a daily basis. Inconceivable. Yeah. yeah that's like all they say, and it's just like, oh shit. Yeah. Imagine if you have like a one liner like that, it'd be like the death of you. That's yeah. all they know you for, you know. I mean, how do you not say that to him though, right? I mean, it's like it's it's almost like a knee jerk there, reaction. There's a funny little. You're that fucking let me, guy. Let me see if I can dig, I'll dig up a nice little picture. Like I guess since we're you know. Um, Oh, uh, here's a sad picture. Here's me with Peter Mayhew. Let's see it passed. that one right there. You know? And I uh, pull it back just a little bit. Yeah, that should be, that should focus a little bit. All right, Is that better. Yeah, a little bit better. Yeah, Peter Mayhew. Now he, the legend. You know, he had passed, and um, and then one of the things that was so funny was that I got I got him right over there. Yeah. No, I, I mean, do you do you ever hear about the? Do you ever hear about they have like in uh, uh, New Orleans they have a Chewbacca? Uh, there's an actual like parade for Chewbacca they do yearly. That's awesome. Why and have I not would, gone to that? I, it, it's crazy. It's like a parade of Chewbaccas, and he would go every year. Yeah. So like those people were so. Oh yeah, sad right? that he it's passed. a fucking parade in your honor. Yeah. Right now. So those are the people that you love. All the people that were in Star Wars. Like they love that they were in Star yeah, Wars. Yeah, no one says me with you, McDermott. There you go. Yeah, right. That, that one right there. So that's it. Ah, that's so, so tight. It's cool, right? You know, I love that stuff. We try to really, you know, go figure. I, and I get a lot of them. I get we'll get people come to the booth and I meet people all day long and stuff. That's, of that's course, always fun. But you know, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so ask me something else Is there anything else You want to know about me Right I mean it's uh, It's fun man What are you going to do With all your uh, Free time now That the coronavirus Is completely wiped out All the ways We can make money In our fucking lives Well 
I do have uh, like I have a lot of commissions to do, so that'll be my that'll be my thing. I between that and you know, and here's the cool part: as an artist, I, I always got I always got to create new stuff. So there's there's always I always used to say there was not enough time. Well, no, there's more time, dude. Um, so I shall be able to get more things created and and new stuff for my fans. Um, I have a couple little side projects that we kind of started working on with some other. Uh, artists and artisans um that we just debuted recently uh, i did a um we have this really neat uh couple that does like woodworking and uh they're actually making these cool like book stash books you know like they're like stash boxes that are shaped like a book yeah and they're taking like my art and putting it into the book of the metal as the cover of the book so it's like they have these cool wooden books with my art in the book so it's wood and metal wood and metal yeah that is pretty cool so i really bad. like that um, i want to get a, i want to get something like that that's pretty, pretty yeah badass. so that's that's something new we just kind of started going off of, you know and it's still in the beginning stages but it's getting there you know it's kind of cool um you know and it's there's so many little things as an artist i like the idea of branching out and trying to give other people a, a way to use my art for a little more practical things um but you know and again this, and this is something again i've noticed is that there's a lot of people that'll take their art and they'll throw it on like a coaster or they'll throw it on like yeah. a mouse pad and some of that's cool but at the same time i feel it's like cheap man it, it cheapens your stuff a little bit like if i can buy if i can buy all your art on a little piece of paper this big guess you what you're gonna lie, sell man. mostly you're gonna sell a bunch of little pieces of paper that's all they sell gonna buy so i'm Dude. very particular about what pieces i put in what format so that way it keeps the collectors happy they got something unique that they're not feeling like they're getting screwed over i don't want people to feel like you know and, and there's a whole way of oversaturating yourself in the wrong way i feel sometimes and i think some oh, artists yeah. are quick to jump on that because they just want a quick dollar and i'm like no nah, i'd rather wait for the the nice amount of money that the people that pay my stuff for and they get you know so I, you know but yeah, don't you get, get it when it comes out it's like sweet you know like oh man we've been waiting for this new tool album for 10 years i can't wait for it to drop you know and yeah. it finally drops and everyone buys it and goes and sees the tour and it's it's fucking awesome you know yeah, yeah. but uh yeah no I, I agree those little cards man I, I see artists doing that and it's it's yeah okay you're gonna sell a bunch of those but your your overall costs on those well, uh, and then you're not really selling your art man you know well, you're selling a, a stamp a postcard a business card like i see people selling little things like that at like you know nickels and i'm like i sell like you know if i sell one of my limited edition pieces at 50 bucks which is still not a bad price it's not expensive it's i mean compared to what people do I just feel like I could sell one of those and sit back while someone's got to sell how many of these little stupid things to make that yeah. same money. You're going to sell a you stack know. of cards like this, mm. and you're not going to make the same profit that you're going to make. No, you know? It's a different deal. I think, I think and, I, and unfortunately, I think, you know, it comes down to what people you know again if they if they if they have the ability to to know what their worth is and if they feel like they you know some people just don't care about money i get that but unfortunately yeah. i'm there to make money too i i love doing my art but i gotta live too you know we all gotta gotta eat so yeah i it's think some people are afraid man you know too there it's like like you said self-worth yeah you're worth something by the way you are worth something for sure it's like crazy you know like i i don't get this point where people think that their art or their creativity isn't isn't worth just as much as everybody else's and it's like you're great go out and be great man don't don't self doubt I, th I think there's a lot of people that you know and maybe that's a reason why I mean let's be honest I feel like a lot of people get into the arts or like the entertainment industry because they're fucked in the head anyway so oh yeah i'm so definitely we all, am. we all start somewhere that we're whether it's something that we have some issues or we don't deal well with authority or we don't do well you know so we can't have a normal job anyway and that's kind of like the big you know there's people that are meant to have normal jobs and god bless those people they deserve it and they can work hard and good for them i can't do that i can't have a normal no i haven't had a normal job in freaking decades so if i had to go back and sit and said hey you suddenly need to work at a store or something like that like this is as close as it gets this is this is me so, you know and that's why it's even funnier like i started growing this beard just because i was like well i can nobody's gonna stop me it's my thing i'll do what i want don't you and, love that and i was so happy you know, when i could grow my beard 
Oh. And it was kind of like, and now it's kind of like, it's funny because it's almost like I'm, I'm known for the crazy guy with the beard. So they just like think that I was like, all right, well, fine. This is my thing. And as long as I have it, I'm happy. Fine. So be it. But I've, I don't, I, I've never liked like corporate events. I never liked having to wear collared shirts. I don't like doing that stuff. If I got, I've never been, oh, yeah. I don't even own a suit. I really don't. I don't care. I'm not that guy. I, you know, I just I don't. I sold out so hard, bro. Yeah. I, I went and bought, I cut my hair, right? I know, I know. And I shaved my face. Yeah. And then I bought a suit and tie. Oh my God. I bought a sports coat. Yeah. I rock that shit, dude. It, on but you know what? It's but a, it gets me jobs. But there, when there's jobs to have, it gets me jobs. You know what I mean? You know what, though? And some guys go, oh, that ain't getting you jobs. And I go, ah, because my yeah. annual income went up by about 30% the oh same God. year I went and bought the sports coat, yeah. cut the hair. And I was like, I'm Mr. Corporate. <laughs> and I, they asked me, too. My bosses, they go, what's up with the hair and everything? I go, I did it for money. Give me money. Yeah. <laughs> it's like what's going on next week? Why am I not on the call? I don't. Yeah. I cut my ponytail off, motherfucker. <laughs> and they're just like, "All right, cool, man. What do you? Yeah, okay." <laughs> yeah, I was like, "I'm know. taking it seriously." And again, I I I'd like to think you know there were a couple of me and a couple other people. I no matter what, I'd like to think that I was always hired. In fact, I could stand behind this. I was yeah. always hired. Because they needed, they liked my work ethic. Yeah. They might not have liked me. They sure as hell didn't like my style, my this, my. They they liked my ability to get the job done. And I even in corporate gigs, I would get a lot of corporate gigs. I think because I got the job done, no matter what. Yeah. I wasn't the guy who had to be like, oh, I can't make this work. No, I would if I had to tear something apart to make it work, something would work. The lights would get lit. The show would go on. It would get broken down and put in a box and be ready to go on the truck by the time they needed to get it on the truck. Yeah. And that's why they liked me. I, I, I'd like to think every crew member I, that worked for me was respected. I tried to give everyone respect. I sure as hell, like, I know I was respectful to everybody that I worked with. Was I stern or was I? I feel like my attitude with with like crew and stuff like that yeah. was always like, look, here's the deal, guys. If you do it my way, we'll get done quicker and it'll be less work. That's just what I tell what I, them to. Just do what I tell you, and I promise you that your day will be easier. Because if you go against me, we're gonna have to do it again. Yeah. And it, and, it, and you know, and then literally, it usually worked. And I, I, I yeah. but the funniest thing is, I still wonder if I missed, like, because I've been out of the business now yeah. for like at least five years now. No, and yeah. I don't think I was. I don't think I am. Somebody they don't need just, any of us. Someone else. Someone else just took over and is doing the jobs. Once we're in a while, all a number. You know, we're all a number, yeah. you know. That's yeah. all we are. We're on an invoice. Yeah. I'm I'm uh, seven hundred and fifty, eight hundred dollars a day, and and I can I can uh, negotiate as much of that as I possibly can out of their pocket because uh, you know I go oh I know how much you charge and I want a cut of that. Yeah. That's my money, and then uh, you know I disappear and they just go well we have money for people so fuck that guy we who Jason who no, he that was just a number you know and that's how they're gonna treat everybody and the second you fucking walk away you think oh no they're, they're oh, def- I mean. <laughs> I mean, instantly. I mean, here's the reality. I mean, the Hard Rock just recently closed. Yeah, I was there. I used to work there. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was, I was in the crew before the Hard Rock. You know, when that all changed, before they changed the venue, mind you, I was part of that original crew, and I, you know, I was part of the people that were actually originally trying to unionize the Hard Rock, <laughs> and when that didn't go down. Um, you know, I think, you know, when you look at those days and those realities and things that changed and how things have, you know, shifted, so, you know, and where I am now compared to where I could be. And I look at those guys now, think of it, think of it like this, all those guys that, that didn't go with my angle of the, trying to unionize for getting better rates and rights and all these things. Yeah. And now the hard rock's gone. <laughs> And I'm still fine. You know? Yeah. But, the, you know, but that's the kind of thing you look at and you go, oh, huh. so that's, it's a very weird you know, you look at the big picture, you know what I mean? So it's when you're standing up for yourself, you you usually get things, uh, you know, it's and true. I, you know, and you got to go out and ask for it. I look at the same deal now. And now it's funny because like now I, I bring that attitude like onto the, the show floors when we're doing shows and things. And I look at like, you know, we're doing shows and like when if they don't give you enough space on the floor, or if they, you know, when they say you're supposed to have a 10 by 10 and you're only got like a 10 by nine, be like, we need to get our space. We need to fight for our space. We don't need our, you know, you literally have to fight yeah, for it. Everything you got to, you have to fight for everything. No, yeah. Nobody gives you anything. No, it's one of those things this where world. there's a lot of good, like, like I like to give you a prime example. Like there's a, there's a show this weekend that I'm not doing because it's not even worth me doing with all this show being canceled. Yeah. And, and I know some people that are like doing that show and they're just like, why aren't you doing the show? I'm like, cause I am, it is not going to 
do me well to put up with that for where it is. I'd rather just do a better show. Yeah. You know, there's a couple of great shows we do in town. I mean, I only do a couple shows in town. Like, uh, we, we just recently did a really good one. Um, they, it was, a. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug them, I guess. Please plug, yeah. I was just uh, about was, to was, say, was, please plug the shows you're it was, doing, it was especially level, in the Vegas one. The show we did was Level Up Expo. And, uh, they, oh, I heard about that. And they took really, you know, they actually had me do uh, their special VIP inserts for their celebrities, for the for the, for the 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 VIP bags. I did a cool metal insert uh, with, like, all the different, like, cool voice actor anime characters put together in one piece. And uh, it was cool because, like, er, this is the second year I did it, and they gave me a really good spot on the floor, so so that when people come in, they'd come right to me and I'd sign them for free for them. Um, but uh, again, it was a good show. It was really good. Um, another show that we do in town is uh, anim- uh, it's Amazing Vegas. Um, that one's been around forever, and we try to do that one every year if we can do it because it's like the good old Comic Con, you know? It's like so, a Comic Con type thing. Straight up Comic Con. They t- they're starting to branch. I feel a little more into the like the pop culture and the. Uh, and the anime end of things, but it's definitely okay. much more of the comic book like crowd, like with the good old you know good old artists and things like that from the you know comic book industry. Oh, I think my uh, I think my buddy's girls just went to that. They went to like some anime convention just recently. Well, the one was the it? one that was in town was that was the yeah. Level Up Expo. They might have gone to. Oh, okay, there was yeah. something after that. There was some again. Is another, there's so many shows that they try and bring into town. That I just won't do if they're not big enough or not worth you know not worth the time. But yeah. there was another one that they might have gone to. I can't remember the name of it, but it was something like sunshine thing or something like that i can't remember but uh like as of right now like yeah that's the deal my life is our schedule is like so messed up right now like i was like next week i'm so i was supposed to be at planet comic-con and that got postponed um and then the week after that i was supposed to be at lexington comic-con in kentucky and that got postponed and the week after that i was supposed to go to disney world and i'm not doing that now because i don't even know if disney world's gonna be open because yeah disney world's closed disneyland's closed they closed disneyland disney world they're thinking about it they're not they haven't Po- they haven't like said it for sure, but they did, they closed Disneyland till like the end of March. So LA is done, but just not Florida yet. Not yet. Uh, um, they'll close that. But again, it's the whole reason why we do certain things like that is because I'm on that side of the country and I have a week to kill before I do something else. And at this point right now, I was going to go to Disney and then go to Indiana Comic Con and Indiana Comic Con postponed. So I have no place to go. So it's like I'm literally in this. Yeah, you know, we're in this constant. Limbo. Yeah, it's just nuts. And so we're hoping that our fans are just, and they are. They've most of them are very like we put a sale up on my website, so I have a sale going right now. Nice. Um, you know, www.peshevex.com. You know, peshevex p e p e s c e f f e c t s dot com. And uh, we have we have a sale going on right now, which people could save some money. They only have to use the at the end of their check in check out. They have to use ECCC, which was back when Emerald City Comic Con canceled. That was my code trying to take care of all the people for Emerald City. But now you could use that same code for all the other shows that can, you know, are non-existent right now. So all the people <laughs> can get stuff. And we'll ship, you know, we ship yeah. all over the place. So it's, uh, you know, it's one of the things. But, it's you know, it's just crazy. It's just it's it's I don't think people realize how many people are i mean forget about me as an artist there's there's all those people that like you that production people that are losing work there's all these people that you know there's all these people that that are in the you know that run the the different arenas there's all these people that run you know all the shows the the venues those things are going to close those things aren't going to be open oh, yeah. broadway shut down did you hear that broadway the, the entire broadway in broadway like, is no done more till broadway. april no broadway till, till april. april they said that they're not doing shows till april so now Jesus. that's new york getting you know it's going to be you know forget about the all the production and actors and all that stuff but that's like oh only about 10 percent of their you know of their income for for travel you know coming yeah. in there it's just shut to nothing um so you know all this stuff is affecting everybody yeah. you know i almost feel like it's like all the fun things are being taken away <laughs> and you know what sucks is usually when the economy shits everybody the bed goes, it's like we're you know, safe you know. like every time anything's ever happened i've been yeah. in the entertainment industry my whole life it's yeah. like well we're good yeah. you know there's always a so show a party we'll put on a show yeah oh, oh. It's, 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 does life suck uh, while we're throwing a party yeah. you know and, and it, now they're now, just like you can't throw parties and no we're parties. Like, oh, there'll be no fun this is and the first time for me that that's, yeah. i've been in that situation where it's like literally no work well and it's like hand in hand i mean the, the stock market's destroyed um i'm so glad i 
just started playing with the stock market. And so I get to, I'm just like, ah, my weed stocks are fucked. My, my S&P I'm going to leave alone. Oh, dude. The only thing I got good and good is my robot stuff. My robot stocks, SoftBank, but dude, SoftBank, I'm telling you, I have, I don't know anything about what I'm talking about, but they invest in robots. <laughs> They, they buy up all the robot shit, dude. Like, uh, it, they're going to fucking buy every, any cool robot thing that happens. Their stock keeps going. When I do all the business investment meetings that I do, dude, they're always talking about SoftBank, or I see it on their things. I didn't get it from that. I got it because they picked up Boston Dynamics, which makes the Atlas robot. Okay. And if you haven't seen the fucking Atlas robot, go on YouTube, look up Boston Dynamics Atlas robot. <laughs> they're making Terminators. That's hilarious. It's really cool. Wow. When I, I was like, I saw that. I go, who who owns that? I want stock in that. And it's it's, it's still stable, even through all this bullshit. I, uh, I you know, uh, I, I was, I've been investing for a while. I, I was investing back before like Obama, you know, and I kind of, yeah. so I had money in the market from that. And at one point I kicked myself cause I had, I had a decent portfolio that was sitting up. Like, I think it was a 40% up. Wow. And, uh, and I was sitting and now I'm in a negative. I mean, I am. So, but again, I, it's a sit and wait type portfolio. So I don't care that it, if it goes back and forth, cause eventually it'll go back up as the plan. But I so close, I was like this close. I was like, I turned to my girl and was like, I'm like 40% up. Well, shouldn't I just sell the whole thing and just wipe it out and just start over or something? Kind would, of, right? And she like was like, everything she, but your S&P. And, and she was like, <laughs> and she was like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll think about it. And, and of then, course, in that week, it was like, yeah. and like, and it went down to, you know, so I, 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 you learn a lesson. I was just like, okay, yeah. so I'm sitting on this. Now. And mind you, I still have a substantial amount in there, but it's like, it's don't sell it now. Don't, don't sell, sell it now. It's the dumbest thing I could do. So I'm just stuck. I'm just like, yeah. all right, so now I'm sitting on this. Hopefully they'll fix it. Hopefully it'll fix itself. Yeah, because all those good things, like the economy was great and the job market was great. It and was. This. And now not so great. Now we're just, now we're all quarantined like a, like a, like it'll a come back up. scenario. I'm keeping, keep your eye on it. And now's the time to invest, to watch that motherfucker will, dive. That's the thing that kills me is yeah. I would be buying left and right. If, if you I had, had to buy the money to buy, I don't have yeah, it. Exactly. So it's like, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's that double edged sword. It's like, how much money do I need to save to survive yeah. this freaking coronavirus nightmare, you know, and how much money can I invest in the stock market while it's down hard like this, yeah, you know, it's but crazy. It's and crazy. there's other people that just have, you know, there's this whole other separate section of society that's just like, oh, I mean, I'll just take out of my hundred million dollar trust fund yeah. while the, you know, the economy's down and, you know, her, 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 oh. You know, we're, fuck you. We're, we're not in that. We're not in that number. God I, damn it. Uh, you know. Uh, so yeah. uh, I, unfortunately, we got to earn our money. But yeah, it's uh, you know, it's 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 interesting times, man. It is interesting times. I I, I tried to jump in. Thankfully, I just tried to jump in on when everyone's like these pot stocks are gonna go crazy, and I was like, I got a little bit of money. I'll throw in the. Yeah, I've always wanted to mess with that, and then they just bombed. The second I bought in. It was, it was yeah, over. The bubble, the, the bubble just um, dove off. I was like, ah, shit. I'm, I'm one of those. Lesson I'm, learned. I'm more of those. I'm one of those people that like, I, I, I bought for the dividend end of it. Like I would see, so, and that's what I needed. And that's what I learned. I learned yeah. about dividends. So I sit on a good amount, and the dividends kind of pay me enough that I can buy more with that. Yeah, and that was the plan. Problem is, is like, yeah, the dividends are fine. It's just at this point right now. Now it's just dealing with whatever's left you know we gotta see because like like i said there was still that part of me that was so close i was like i could just sell it all and just take my rewards and be happy but at this point now i'm back to like okay well now i'm i mean now i'm just game, sitting right? on it it's a game it is what it you is. gotta sell it eventually or you're not playing the game no well that's the deal you don't have to sell it yeah if you don't sell it you can sit on a long enough you sit on a long time the, you just got to make sure the, but, the biggest thing with anything with the yeah. market is you got to make sure that you you don't care about that money because the moment you care about that money now it's doomed trick. when you i know? put it in i said i'm gonna lose all of this money it's just like when i gamble i yeah. go see this 20 dollars i'm yeah. putting in the machine it's fucking gone yep. i'm not gonna win anything from it yep. but i'm gonna play this game for a little bit yeah and maybe something happens yeah you know but like you can't go oh, this is gonna be my fortune i'm gonna make no, everything's no. gonna and there are people that live that way yeah there are people that are that are almost die hard living you know oh, dude no, it's it's not it is that. dangerous man that's you a know. that's a scary way to fucking go about life bro well that's i mean that's that's the problem with vegas you move in the Vegas I mean I think I don't know like I I feel like like I'm sure you didn't 
grow up here. I didn't grow up here. No, definitely. So not. like for me, like I think when I first moved to town, I think you have to like lose like one paycheck or something before you like get the deal. You know what I mean? Like so no, don't gamble. Yeah, that's that's your that's your lesson. You, you go in with your first like chunk of change and be like, I'm gonna become rich off of this gamble and stuff, and you lose it all and be like, I'm never gonna gamble again. Oh yeah. You know, I used to my, my I I what I do now is if I want to play anything, I'll just play like a game because I want to see the game play something out yeah. or something. Oh, like a penny game. I That's as poker. far as I go. Like I, I, I liked Texas Hold'em. I just don't play it anymore. I really don't have the, the time for that. But it's fun. You know, it's fun. And me and my friends like this. And and maybe we should do it. I mean, we're all we're all kind of uh, we're not making any money right now, right? Yeah. Uh, I like going and doing the limit hold'em where. Um, right, like right here at stations, right? I've only done it once. So yeah. I, like, like I say, I do it like I do it. We did it once. It was a blast, yeah. right? We spent all day. It was 75 bucks down, right? But okay. everybody only gets that that amount of money, okay, right? Okay. You can't have some fucking dickhead walk in and go, oh, well, I, I know you started with 75 bucks, but I raised you 500. Yeah. <laughs> you know, fuck oh, yeah. you, man. Yeah, yeah. Everybody gets the same pot. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so it's like this fair ground. You sure. go play Texas Hold'em, and your 75 bucks yeah. get you, like, if you don't just walk in, like a lot of people, I took a few people. Yeah. I was I was pretty proud of myself. They go <laughs> they go all in, and I go, you ain't got shit. Look at the fucking flop. I call and take all their money. Yeah. Then they buy back in for another gotcha, 75. Gotcha. I still lost though. There were some really good players over there. Well, I'm no, not a I mean, really good player, that's but that's I had a whole, fun. There's a whole like, and I, I, I mean, Jesus Christ! I, I back when back when I think the World Series of Poker was getting popular. Yeah, like when the Grounders movie came out and shit like that. When you'd be like paying attention to that stuff. I like that stuff. I was playing like I even played like a little bit of like Texas Hold'em. I think on the in the in the computer like you'd play online with people and do yeah. some tournaments and stuff. So I could I, I would be down. Maybe we'd do something like that since I've got a little time around. Sitting I'll around totally hit you up. I just thought yeah. of it right now. I'm like, why are we not doing that? Because we can make yeah. some money. I made some money that yeah. day. I mean, I didn't well, make a lot of money. Are, just like just like the stock but. market, you might as well walk in with the idea. I'm gonna lose seventy five bucks. <laughs> oh yeah, no, 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 no. no. We're we're paying seventy five yeah. bucks for eight hours yeah. of entertainment. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's you like know, you're, so. you're paying ten bucks an hour to go fuck around yeah. it's actually i mean like it's less than if you were like going to dave and buster's i spend more than 10 bucks an hour at dave and buster's yeah. <laughs> you know no but it's true it's true yeah like the one gambling store that i was talking about it right when i moved to town and i was working at house of blues right i uh i would go across the street to the laughing jackalope after work because yeah. they had dollar coronas and i'm fucking broke yeah. i'm working at the house of blues right uh and, and i watched uh one of the security guards there and i know these guys are getting paid 10 bucks an hour yeah Right, and uh, I I hadn't been in town, uh, you know, in like six months, maybe maybe six, seven months, right? And this motherfucker sits next to me. I order a Corona and I put my twenty in, and uh, and I go and I play like a hand, and we're talking. I watch him take a hundred dollar bill, shoves it in the machine, and. And we don't have a conversation, really. Like, we're trying to... He's not listening to me. He just sits there yeah. and goes, tap, 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 $100 is gone. I mean, it has not been five minutes yet. Whoa. Okay. That was all the money that you just made today and probably yesterday because you're $10 an hour. These shows are what? How long are you working? Five, yeah. six hours. Wow. Right. And so we're not even talking taxes. So it's like you just gambled away two days pay. And he goes, fuck it. Another hundred dollars in the thing. Tap, 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 tap. I watched him do this to his entire wallet. Wow. And I went, that had to be. Everything you made this week, maybe two weeks, working this job that you're working, why did you just do that to your all of your money? Yeah. And on the first hundred, you just go, oh, well, I fucked up, yeah. right? But it's, it, but, all right, <laughs> get her out. Daph, out now. <laughs> she was up there for a reason. Well, the lights are out, so I can't talk. Hey, you got to go. So... Yeah, anyways, my dog. We love Daphne. Sorry, I'm yelling. I, she just gets yelled at for barking you know, when we're in the middle of a podcast and she tries to knock all over my cables over. Trust me, my dog is a princess. <laughs> <laughs> she gets spoiled rotten. But uh, but yeah, man, I mean, fucking gambling, dude. It's, it's a rough one. You know, and that's, I mean, here's the deal. We live in a city that's got every pretty much addiction possible. And I guess that's one of the reasons for, like for me personally, I guess that's why I was able to be 
uh, successful because I didn't have any of that stuff. I don't, I don't drink. I don't, I don't do any of that. You know, I'm not. Sorry. Yeah. I don't drink. I don't gamble. I don't smoke. I don't. I don't do any of that stuff. I'm yeah. very. I'm very boring with that end of it. I'm just. I like. I like. I like my sex. <laughs> I like my movies. I like my collectibles. I like my gaming stuff when I play. You know, that's me. That's my reality. And none of that stuff really matters where you are in the country. So to me, those things don't affect me as much and the beautiful thing about it is is there's so many people it does affect in this town that you can easily rise to the top of anything because there was jobs i got mostly just because i was not gonna fall off my chair at some point retarded from you know from being drunk or high or stupid i literally i I get jobs i show up on time you know i'm like 10 minutes early and i don't smell the booze Mm -hmm. and that alone people are blown away it's uh, they're just like wow you showed up on time and you're not drunk i think i'm gonna keep you around and it's like that's the standard that people are setting around here when i moved to town the first job i got was i literally just opened the phone book i didn't know anybody yeah so i opened the phone book and i called the staging company and they were like uh yeah show up you want to work on the decks out and out in the field we'll we'll put you to work and literally from that job I went from that job to House of Blues, Hard Rock, The Union, to I was working at Thomas's Mac. I was working at all these places, mostly just because the first thing they said is, you're sober. Oh, my God. You showed right. up on time. You're reliable. I want you. And that was that was the deal. And, my, my, you know, again, my rate of work went from, like, 10 bucks an hour to more, to more, to more. You know, so I was getting union wages by the time. And then the union even got – the guy at the union hall looked at my resume from being in New York and doing what I was doing theater out there and, and all that. And it was like, shoot, your resume is cooler than mine. <laughs> I was like, put me to work. I want to work. Oh, yeah. You know, and that was, that was the deal. And that worked for me. And, again, you know, I feel like anybody, if you work hard, you can do anything. I tell people all day long. I get people all day looking at me going, well, Jerry, you went off and did your own thing. You're making your own business. You're making your own living with the, with your art and all this. And I said, I'm not special. I did what I know. I'm yeah. doing it well. Anybody can do anything if you put the work in. We That's travel, it. you know, me and my girl travel the country. We, you know, we do well. I do I do better than I did in production, honestly. I'm happy. I'm very thankful. Maybe it's because it's what I'm meant to be doing. I don't know if I you know, I believe in fate and all that reality, but I am doing what I do and yeah. I've become become, you know, I, I've you know, getting better at it. And that's one of those things where I just feel like anybody that's had a dream follows a damn dream. You can't can't only try if you don't try. Yeah. I think fate and karma and all that kind of stuff. All that, that's like, uh, it, it's, it's a word we put on things for, you know, you're, you're interested, you've been following a path, you know, and as you go along that path, I mean, this is going to happen to you if you keep going down, you know, like mathematically, you can see it at the end of the road and people want to call that fate or whatever they want to call it. And it's just, you know, it's persistence of, of being you consistently. And that's, and it, it's gonna, it's gonna add up to that, you know, and me and my, uh, you, you know, uh, Jason Reppenhagen, you know that name? No. He's a, he's a production guy. He's actually doing uh, all the uh, uh, what's the fights? The not the not the not the wrestling, but like the, the UFC stuff. UFC. He's 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 one of the production guys for UFC. Nice. Um, I just got to do does. a fight gig. Well, and he he's the guy who's in charge of. He does an end of that. He's he's now travels the country and does all their setups and for things. And but we used to work together doing production for all these corporate events all over the place. And at the end of the show, we'd both all look at each other and go, "We fooled them again." And that was the reality. That's, that's it, right? Kinda, you we fooled them, fooled them again. And that was it. The moment that somebody trusts you enough to put on a show to do this or a piece of artwork, and and you were able to make them happy, and they don't care about how you got it to be, and you you, know, you fooled it. You, you know, you you created it out of nothing. And I, that was all always one of the, the biggest thing. I mean, my girl still to this day will get out of a show where we have a great successful show selling art all weekend and fold them again. We made it happen. You know, it's the reality. And it's just, that's the deal. It's, there's so much, you mm-hmm. know, there's so much opportunity. I feel like people just are afraid to take. Maybe they don't think they can get it. Maybe they don't, don't want to make, some people don't want to make the effort. There's people that are meant yeah. to pump my gas all day long. And oh yeah. So that's the deal. They could pump my gas. I, I just, I just feel like if you have a dream, you have a, you have an idea got to go for it you but know? you got to go for it and that's the one thing that people don't really fucking get um is Man. you have the best idea in the world but uh now that idea is your job and uh what's you what's expected of you at your job right yeah. you're expected to show up eight to ten hours a day yeah. five to six days a week and work i'm gonna and tell you work. right now if you have your own business yeah i work 24 hours a day yeah. seven days a week when somebody thinks that being your own business person is 
excuse me, easier. That's a lie. Me and yeah. my girl, we get messages all hours of the night for people, whether it be some some high person looking at my website wanting to buy something. I can't blow him off because that might be a hundred bucks in my pocket. Yeah. If, uh, if somebody wants, a, if somebody has a question about a commission, if somebody wants to know what show we're gonna be, like your my my phone is, you know, I I could tell you right now, like if I was to go through my, there's like messages that I'm ignoring that hopefully my girl is like dealing with when I'm not while I'm doing this podcast with you. Oh yeah. That's the reality of my life is we have to be constantly vigilant because I'm not the only guy who draws stuff, and if somebody gets sick and tired of waiting on Jerry. There's another guy who would draw it. Oh, yeah. It's the reality of it. Now, yes, I'd like to think my style is is going to uplift them and make them happy, and I will save the day. But there's, a, you know, nobody waits forever for nothing, you know, and that's a reality. So yeah. I just do what I do. We try to be as good to our customers as we can. I take care of all my fans. I try to bring them what they want. There's a lot of times where, you know, where I'm trying my best to try and engage it. And there's some people that will be like, oh, well, you should draw this. And I'll be like, you should pay me to draw this. And I'll wait it out. There's some characters and things that I just am never going to draw somebody doesn't make me do it because I just I just don't have time I don't want to I don't want to make the effort yeah but then there's cool stuff that I get asked to draw you know like and my commissions are weird man I get that like I like if I, I'll give you like here's here's a list of what Jerry's got coming up I you love know? it I gotta love hear it, this yeah. man it gets crazy because it's like it's not there's nothing that I'm doing that is literally the same deal everything is unique and different so like when I'm drawing like a like if I got like on the top of my list, I have I have a nice lady who's commissioned me to do not only Ronin from uh, from from uh, the Avengers movie uh, from Guardians of the Galaxy, the okay, Ronin, okay. the guy with the hammer. But yeah, she has the me blue guy, the the guy with the helmet and the hammer, and she's got like the yeah, 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 he's like the main all. villain. In he the was first the main one. guy in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Yeah, but she has me doing her own character, which is like her own unique character of herself that she's done she's like a cosplayer so she actually has her own character so oh, i'm fun. doing her character and ronin as a separate piece. so that's just one person then i have somebody like i don't know if you if you're a fan of like neil gaiman but like mm-hmm. i have like i was doing a whole series of sandman characters and somebody has me doing like i'm literally doing like desire and despair like back to back that i have you know so i have oh, like nice. which again totally different then i have somebody having me do like you know uh you know a bunch of uh you know howl's Floating Castle, Spirited Away, you know, Destiny stuff. I have this I have this awesome chick Raven who commissions me to do like three or four commissions at a time, which will lock me in on doing and I do those and you know, and she gets her you know, so there's so many and then I have somebody doing like a Star Wars piece. It's like a multi layered multiple Leia, Princess Leia piece with like all different versions of Leia together. You know, so I have all these cool commissions and this is just five of the 30 I've got going right now. Right. You know, I, it, I love it because some of these things are things I might have wanted to do eventually or may never thought to do, but the coolest part is the moment I do these things, I got 49 other people that are going to make happy with this stuff. Oh, yeah, so, right. I, you know, it just works out. I have people waiting on some of these other people's commissions because they couldn't afford the commission, <laughs> but they're happy to get one once it comes out. And, you know, and, the, and a lot That's of these. Awesome. And, and I feel like my, the people that commissioned me, I feel like they're happy because nothing makes them feel like, like, like imagine if you paid me to draw something and all the limited edition ones sold out. Right, it makes you feel like you picked something cool. Yeah, you know, like your, you know, your unique uh, preference on that art is special. Well, and that's it. And I, I'd say, a th- you know, a th- at this point, about a third of my pieces are commissions, so it's kind of cool. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. What's your favorite thing to to draw right now? Wow, I get asked yeah. that a lot. Usually, my f- my funny answer is the last piece I sold. The last piece thing. you <laughs> sold, right? But, Even but, I mean, no, all right. But like, so what's the, what, 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 let's what say, do you draw the most of? Is a better question, right? What like, I, you're like, I don't know what to do. What I'm I get, go to this old standard. You know what? What I get asked, you know, what 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 I think people like in my art that they look forward to even in no matter what character I'm drawing for them is they want to see the cool lighting effects that I do they want to see the colors that I bring to it because usually it's very trippy weird colors that I like to use because I use a lot of those cool 80s 90s rock and roll colors in my pieces so it doesn't matter if it's part of like that's the funny thing is like I'll draw I get a lot of gaming and anime people wanting me to draw their favorite characters because I draw them my way not the way necessarily the anime does them so like if I'm doing like like I get a kick out of uh, like we like, do you watch any animes? I watch love it? anime, bro. Like, do you watch uh, uh, My Hero Academia? Hell yeah, I watch so, My like, Hero Academia. So, like, I just, uh, I just completed a, a personal piece. I just did a, I did a new, uh, um, over, uh, oh, what's his name? Um, 
overload or overhaul. That's it. Overhaul. Okay. He's the, he was the big bad guy recently in the show. Okay. Um, so I just did a piece of, uh, like a carrot piece of him and everyone's all jumping all over it. But like my first, my hero piece that I did, which was just me going like, somebody was like, you need to do a my hero piece. And I was like, all right, fine. I'm going to do one. I'm going to do uh, I did a cool piece that has, um, um, like I can show it. I'll put it on the camera. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Easy. You pull it up. That's a beautiful thing about having my entire portfolio like on my phone. I could bring things up at any point. Technology, you it's know. Amazing, and I mean, we, we, it's it's just so easy to fucking pull anything you want up. So uh, I so, need to get a uh, I need to get a port. One of these ports has got to be a uh, camera or like a uh, computer port, so you can just and we'll pull it right up. As yeah, an no, be, file so, okay, so it. here is, this is, uh, this, oh, is my, perfect. this is my first My Hero piece that I did. Oh, just a little bit more. Yeah, that's perfect right there. Look at that guy. Ah, so, see, that came out great. So now, this was me who was, I was barely watching the show. I just started getting into the show, kind of, but I had so many people asking me to do a, a piece for the show. I was like, fine. Now, if you look at that piece, that was my own interpretation, which I thought, if you know, you know anyone who knows the show, you know, you have the guy who turns into All Might. Yeah. And he's like, I call him Small Might. So the, the Small. Little guy. <laughs> but like, and it's the, the kid Deku, who's the one who gets the powers from him and, and all that stuff. But like, that was my own like connection to it I was like oh, I think it's so cool that he turns into this big guy and it's kind of like but you still connected to the little version of him and all that stuff um and again, all 50 of that piece sold out like a month. I was like they're oh, really? gone. In fact, that piece was so freaking popular. We do um not only do I sell my medals, but I do like a hollow foil version which is a metal. It's like a paper that's like a reflective paper I do of some of my pieces when you can't get them on the large metal anymore. I sold 250 of those. Those sold out like instantaneously too. So that's retired on the hollow foils because I only do 250 of those. Oh, so it was kind of nuts, man. I mean, that's a that's a crazy, crazy thing. We've done multiple shows with like a lot of the voice actors, like Chris Abbott, who's also the voice of Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z. Oh, um, he uh, he's he's the guy who's the voice of, of of All Might. I just started Dragon Ball Z again. You did it again. I got yeah. all the way through all the Dragon Balls. Yeah. Dragon Ball Z episode one's about to start. Well, we uh, I've so many episodes. So like I. Uh, um, so anyway, so oh, well then you'll you'll dig the heck out of this. Uh, I gotta show you. I've this never piece. done it. You know, growing up as a kid, the episodes were on, but I never actually like had the opportunity, as we do here in the future, where you can stream that shit from episode one to the end of the series all the way through and not miss a single episode. So, Dragon Ball original was tight. I I really enjoyed so, it. So you remember the Ultra Instinct Goku? Maybe. Isn't is that from Super? That's from Super. That's yeah. from Super. This I only like, saw a couple episodes of uh, Super. Uh, Super. I haven't. Crazy, I've been saving so, the Super for after I like get through the whole nice, series. This was actually a nice commission that I had gotten. That looks tight. Uh, it, it was, and if you look, it's actually it's it's a fight between Goku and uh, this character Kefla, where they fight each other. Uh, so if you look, the pieces okay. go together. It was a commission somebody hired me to do, so the two medals would go together to make That's one big tight. piece. And mind you, all these sold out like instantaneously. All fifty large. Of course. Gone. But uh, who doesn't I just, like Dragon Ball? I, I, you know? I'd say I get. I I think I'm done. Like at this point, like my latest one I did actually uh, here here if you're you'll recognize this guy if you're a Dragon Ball Z fan. This was a commission I just recently did for one of my fans. Oh yeah, 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 Majin. Yeah, and if you look, you can see all the different Majin candies Boo. and cookies. Oh, oh yeah, cookies. <laughs> There's the Vegito ball. You know? So I, I again I I put like I try and put a lot of you know into the pieces so that people respect them, you know, but that's, I think that's, what's good about your art, you know, is, is you're not just like patronizing people to get their fucking money. I agree. 100%. You're a fan of this I'm stuff. I'm a fan of it. And, and I, I know, stand it behind that. Like when people talk like, and there's a lot of, there's some artists that really shit on fan artists. Yeah. There's some artists that really get like angry about that shit because it, in, because I'm not like getting, you know, hired to draw this but I do it because I want to, you know, kind of thing. I believe very strongly in the fandoms that I do. I, I work very hard. When people hire me to draw a character, even if I'm not a fan, I watch the show. I look yeah. at what it is. I try and do my best. Nothing irks me more when I see other artists do something and they don't know what the hell they're drawing. Yeah. You tell their, and you could tell. I mean, I'm sure that the fans can tell. It's like the Dragon you know? Ball Z live action movie. Did you see that? No, I couldn't even watch it. I looked at it, but I was like, no. It, it's like exactly, it, it, it's exactly what we're talking about, yeah. right? Like the guy saw a picture, saw a picture of it's Dragon a, Ball Z yeah. and then just made the whole screen. He has no fucking yeah. idea what he's doing. It was had nothing to do with Dragon I've, Ball. I mean, I've, it was an embarrassment. I've seen published artists like draw like, 
like Thanos with the wrong hand with the gauntlet on the wrong hand. Yeah. I've seen I've seen people do Star Wars characters with the lightsabers in the wrong hand. I got a great one you're gonna yeah. fucking love doing yeah. this. But here's what you know, I'm gonna put it on camera too. We knew we did this when we did this, and I don't give a fuck because it looked better, okay? Yeah. Okay. But when we did my kiss piece Okay on the back, watch this. Look it, look it, look it. Where's my fucking kiss piece at on my back? See the star? Okay. Did you put it on the, the wrong star's side? on the wrong side? Uh, so you flipped them. You see the star a little bit, right? Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, so yeah. so let me guess. You flipped the image and you basically yeah. So you flipped yeah. the image yeah. and you forgot that it was on the other side, but I'm you right, didn't right, want right. it to face the right way. We knew when we flipped uh, the image. Okay. We 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 knew what we were doing. When I and we both went, fuck it. Ah. Uh, no, who gives it? Uh, fucking kiss. But has anybody called? Rock and has roll. anybody called you out? Nobody, nobody has is. ever noticed. See, that's the difference. And though. I thought I think it's hilarious. Yeah. And I was just like, it, it looks better. And I know, and I don't mind. That's, you know. I mean, it works for the the layout. It works for that. It did, but, but I'm my let me get. But total bullshit because it's on the wrong <laughs> fucking eye, man. <laughs> but and it's a tattooed on my body forever. Yeah, and that's I, I think it's great. That's only awesome. two, yeah, I guess well, only two people did know, which is me and my homie Ray ever saw yeah. up in Oregon I love you bro uh, who's been doing this kiss piece for a while but now I guess everybody else knows too that that stars are on the other side yeah. Uh, yeah we did literally we flipped the image in the uh, in, in Photoshop and we're like yeah that looks better he needs yeah. to be facing that direction yeah. and I like this picture well of and I get and, I, and trust me most artists that's kind of the nature of the beast when you're laying yeah. out your pieces a lot of people flip things a lot of things I, I always work and that's another, I work very hard when I'm doing my art to whenever I'm you know, when you're working on a character, first of all, it's got to look like the character. I get it. Not everyone can draw the same, you know. But the, the biggest thing, that I think that's the biggest challenge is when you're drawing a character that everyone recognizes, you know, forget about the fact, let's forget about like an anime character where you can kind of go nuts and everyone can do. But when you're drawing like a human being, oh yeah, it's got to look like that person. Oh, so I, I, I really work hard. Like to, I'm, I've, I'm getting better with live people. Especially the nose. It's hard, dude. The fucking nose, man. Um, Like I, you know, like I've, like and again, I I've, I've gotten better at drawing live people. At first, I was scared shitless. A lot of times, mm -hmm. people would ask me to draw somebody, I'd be like, I don't want to, I don't want to mess that up, you know. Because the other thing is that's a whole other thing. Because I do so many crazy lighting techniques and stuff in my pieces, it's very easy to turn somebody that looks normal under, say, some normal light into yeah. a weird looking motherfucker with some crazy light. Because then you go, oh, that doesn't even look like that person no more. So I have to work extra hard to even keep that realistic look of their face going because there's times where the way the shape of their face changes like if I put a shadow in the wrong place it looks like they got a fat nose or if they got no, a weird right. it does it happens it that does. way highlights and shadows and different things yeah. can really mess things up so I really try to work hard to try and get you know what I mean? I'd like to think I've done good I have a lot of people very happy the stuff but you there's, do stuff, is always there's times I look at things and I go oh I hope that looks good enough <laughs> but, you know, and then you know but, oh yeah man but as the artist you're always going to be the one who sees that I do but and there's no that, and anything that's wrong in a piece, it. I, I I could point it out forever, and this times people. It's all you'll ever see. I always. It's all it. you'll it's ever right see. To the fuck up. Yeah. I did or something. And I was like, dude, that line kills me. And metal, and that's the other thing. It's like, see, this is a whole other beast. Now going onto metal, I have to deal with other things because the translucency of the metal with the layering, it can screw things up too. So lines that don't appear like on a piece of paper will appear sometimes on the metal, and that's a whole and, I, and there's a whole other deal with that that end of the of the 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 canvas itself um and there's a lot of people don't give a fuck i get a lot of yeah. people that print on metal like to the i feel like too many people that are doing metal these days uh because of a lot of people saw me doing it they just saw i made money and they're like i'm gonna do metal too yeah so that's what happened i feel like a lot of people put on metal yeah man it's, it's a, just a printing process it all is technically high-tech printing process yeah. they just don't do it the way i do it but i just feel like when you see a lot of these guys i get people all day long walking up to my booth going i've never seen anything like this before and i could have like metal people all around me and they don't even notice them and it's just hilarious it's that's not, so great it's just that's crazy so great. You but know? you know i mean you know flattery or uh what's it called that fucking expression right uh, 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 uh mimicry is like the, the yeah. transform of flattery or yeah. ripping someone ripping off ripping someone's fucking style like. off yeah <laughs> it, that's They're a whole like, other hey man you know it's that that's a great idea. Maybe it'll work for me, man, you know, and it, it you know, it, uh, but it won't. It, not you know as well what? as it's going to work for you. If I, if I you know, I, I, I've had one guy that I had a, had, had a shut down that copied one of my pieces. I had one guy that I had. He copied it. He pretty much copied my piece. Um, wow. He, was, he literally tried to flip it, which, which didn't make sense because the, um, 
the, it was a Star Wars piece, and he flipped it, and basically the lightsaber was in the wrong hands. So he was just trying to take my piece and flip it, kind of. And I was and like, now did he do it like, like digitally? He like scanned it. He's and, obviously a digital right. artist. Yeah, um, but uh, you know, and he tried to do a little differently. I, the biggest thing is, is what a piece of shit. It, you know. It, you know, we deal with all you know, all kinds of plagiarism. People. And the hardest part is, is, and I actually had to have a conversation with this person because I said, "Look, we're all artists, but at the same time, this guy was also doing art on metal." And I was like, "Hey, man, I got a bunch of people that are looking at metal. You can't just try and copy my stuff and then think that I'm not going to say something about it." Yeah. You know? So, you know, he at least took it down and supposedly made it go away. But yeah, it was it was a little bit of a, a discussion at one point. Yeah, man. I mean, it's one thing to steal your style, but it's another thing to steal your direct art, man. You can't plagiarize oh, dude, the fucking dude. image, man. It's like, oh, I'm going to do fucking metal pictures. And it's like, go, good luck. You know, good luck to you. But, you know, yeah. you can't just fucking take someone's exact image, man. I get it. You know, and it's interesting. Like, I guess having, you know, now that I, I am an artist, I guess, doing this, I, I do feel sensitive about certain other things that I see a lot of. Like, I feel like a lot of people that post other people's art and don't give them credit, stuff like that. You know, we all know those people that just say, this is awesome, oh, yeah. and they don't even know who the hell drew it, you know, kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. So I, I kind of try and be a little more, I guess, you, like, you can only be so mean to those people because they're only just trying to be, they're just excited about something. But I, there's a couple of people I've said, hey, can you give the artist a little credit? Because they you really you do, know, you know. Um, especially think, musicians. Yeah. Especially musicians, guys, credit yeah. your photographers. Yeah. Espe- <laughs> all your posts, credit your photographers, dickheads. Oh, I bet. No, I get a lot of, you know, I bet a lot of artists, uh, about, you know, because there's some great photography of, like, bands and stuff out yeah. there but I'm sure and they yeah. just go like look at my new picture of my fucking band and it's like uh, you know this p- other person that took that picture that you probably didn't even pay yeah. you know that's no, their right. business and they're no. trying to promote it yeah. and like they need to cross promotion man cross promotion just like I'm wearing my yeah. Sideshow Joe shirt man <laughs> you know what I mean Joe Kilmeister is amazing yeah. check out Joe Kilmeister that guy's out of his friggin mind if you want to watch a clown light himself on fire <laughs> he'll lift weights with his nuts uh, Oh, God. What a crazy motherfucker that guy is. We'll have him on the show, too, of course. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, this, so, so it's, a, you know, the whole, the whole, you know, I think everything's cha- That's the whole beauty of it. It's like, it's like as, as all this stuff has gone to what it is and how it moves forward. And like I said, it's a beautiful thing. I've known you for years. And yeah. like, you know, like, like, you know, when we'd be sitting up in the courtyard doing a band or something like that, that's doing, you know, sitting there like, you know, wasting our brains away on some bad like cover band or doing something. You know, nobody ever thinks where you're going to be 10 years from now. Oh, so I know. It's crazy. So Those are the best times, man. For me, when I was this 20-year-old alcoholic kid <laughs> sitting there, like I remember I remember a specific moment, a specific memory in time where we had Purple Rain on stage, <laughs> and I was doing monitors in the courtyard on that little piece of shit Mackie, yeah. you know, and, uh, and I'm like, I, I must have just started working at the House of Blues like, that yeah two months maybe you know and i'm looking up here and i'm like i'm in las vegas doing this show mixing on a console at the house of blues like i fucking made it man you know like how much better does it get you know and i just i couldn't be- i couldn't have been any happier to be in that position at that moment in my yeah. life you know it was just amazing yeah. to be doing those shows with you man i look back on them with uh with great fondness that's for sure well no it was never a bad i mean we really i mean we did we had a yeah. we had a bit of a grueling schedule we were up a lot of crazy hours if we were oh, doing yeah. like multiple shows in the same day and then you know and for the most part everyone was cool there i really enjoyed working at house of blue i still i still technically i'm on staff i still get the I, schedule they still do you the schedule i i don't care i don't care i tell them just keep sending it to me and if they, i said basically what i said is I, was, I will never work at this point but if you need a consultation or somebody to talk to you about something yeah i will be happy to consult you on lighting stuff if it's going to helpful because at this point it's it's just not in my cards i i couldn't go back you can't at this point because so, I'm too used to my scheduling, my reality. The my, amount of money you make in a day, uh, and a that, that also it's limits you. It's a little you. different. It's a yeah, little different. You know, I mean, even like, then, I'll I be like honest. doing it, but you're costing me money to come do it for you. Well, and that's kind of, I mean, House of Blues is, a, you know, for what it was as a company, it was a cool company. 
I just anybody that work like when you work yeah. there and then you know you're working like I, and I would tell them all day long if, even freelancing gigs like when you do corporate gigs I'm sure you do the same thing now yeah. if I needed if I needed a day off I'd be like look I can't work this day because I have a corporate gig it's going to pay me a way lot more money yeah. to be there than you guys pay me and I'd love yeah. to be you know I looked at the House of Blues as the cush gig the easy gig it was easy you do it you, yeah, you, know, it you have fun. fun you relax you get to hang out with your friends and then I would go off and go make real money and the money I was making there was you know it was okay it wasn't great but it was not but it's you know when you're making better money it's Nowadays, yes, my my life as an artist is a little different. I probably am making you know a lot more than than I ever made there. But oh, yeah, you know, it, it's just it's a different lifestyle. Again, thankful for all that stuff. All those things brought me to be where I am now. Oh, yeah, it's a blessing. The, they know? made me be the artist I am. Hard work though, too. Well, that helps too. You worked you, your ass off to get to where you are. You have to have a regiment. I mean, I and then you know, and here's the other thing. I I uh, she's not here. I hope you know at some point you know you get you get to see her. But my girl Serenity is is my manager. Oh, yeah, she I love is, Serenity. She yeah. is uh, she's my driver. <laughs> she does half the setup with me. She sells with me. She's the one who runs our website. She's our social media like she is I draw a pretty picture she does friggin everything else I mean that's pretty much what it comes down to you need that person and and she is that girl she kicks ass she's she's the she's the heavy when I don't want to put up with bullshit I send I say you shut them down and you put up with it but I love her to death and she's like she's my girl and we've been together in this from the beginning and and there's a lot of artists that's a whole other thing to say is when you don't have that extra person I feel I see some of these guys that are struggling because they don't have the extra person to do the websites, to do the bookings, to do the hotels, to do, you know, and there's some artists that do have representation, but they're not going to take as good care of as the person that's, you know, that's sleeping with you and taking care of you there. Because oh, guess yeah. what? If I go down in flames, she, she, there's her dinner too. So she yeah. wants, you know, we all need to survive. So it's a, you know, so we have a very good relationship and it's been perfect. I mean, we get to travel the whole country together, which is awesome too. So when we're, we're you know, this is the most I think I've been away from her in like months like because usually we're together 24 <laughs> 7 well you'll uh, have to bring yeah. her next time i, I know I mean, she was in she was literally i mean here. she's i mean like i said right now she's kind of putting out fires for the whole our whole schedule going down in flames I because of, so she's she's kind of dealing with that reality but again when i told her about this she was like you go do your thing you go you know go do this podcast get a, get our get your name out there and do a whole thing and 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 i'll be running the show while you're there and she is she's like i said every time somebody bings me on this phone she's the one handling it right now so that's awesome yeah now you got to have that man yeah well you know next time you know you got to have her come in and uh, oh no and we'll do, do, we'll do another one it. of these things we'll do and something cool definitely like you know uh we'll, we'll schedule another one whenever you're uh you're doing a show in town that you can promote and get people out to we, uh, uh, vegas i'll tell you right now i could yeah. do, well amazing vegas we'll get amazing we'll, vegas you're doing that june yes yeah, so in we'll, june why don't we why don't we say that now yeah um, let's do another one and let's do another one of these in june for sure right yeah. right around the time of the event as well and then you come in and you should film like our setup or i would something and exactly. do like a whole or, yeah. or even a or even just like a, a a day in the life type thing or something no that's definitely what i want to do with it i want to i want to incorporate my my podcast into the real world oh, man. i don't so want to cool. just bring the world into the studio i want to go out as some fucking dummy yeah. and who doesn't know anything and yeah. all of you i can come out with you and and, and yeah. we can set up and hang out and i'll try to sell some i'll try to sell some <laughs> paintings for you bro you know we'll have a good time yeah. we'll make a whole video out of it man you know i mean that's what it's about man. Nah, you know living life that's why i call awesome. it to the fullest you know i'm no, trying to let's live it. life to the fullest and, and have fun no, and I do agree. everything i can with it man now that'd be badass we'll do that and uh yeah so i mean you know and it's just it's just the nature of it at this point right now like i said we're happy we're doing our thing yes is this is this whole disease thing where everyone's taking you it'll know pass. quarantine it'll pass and when the weather gets warm i you know <laughs> I, you know i had to we i had to just say it's like it's okay i had like five or six shows i'm dealing with right now go go poof but guess what i still do like over 30 shows a year so it's not a big deal it's that there's still shows yeah they're gonna so, come back and they're gonna come back, back strong man you know yeah. and they're and the ones that don't weren't weren't doing too good to begin with so it's probably good if they go away yeah exactly so, you know um, well i like that man i think uh I think we killed this podcast, dude. It's no, I fucking think great. This I, was cool. I'm excited. This is like almost two hours of just sitting here talking solid and no dead spots, man. I mean, I could I, talk forever with you, man. It's a pleasure. You it know? really is. It is a pleasure. It's also man. good because it's like catching up. We haven't talked in years, so this is kind of like it's like a catch up for us either way. Yeah, I know. Seriously, we got to totally fucking catch up more and hang up more often, man. I, I'll be doing more barbecues too. And now that I there's uh, now that there's fucking time to actually cook, I I'm gonna know. do it. I'll uh, smoke a big piece of meat out back. 
Yeah, man. Cool. Fucking hand that shit out to everybody, dude. Yeah. Do a big brisket or something. Invite yeah. everyone over. No, that'd be great. You know, and that's the funny thing is like uh, when I when I kind of started pulling a little bit out of the industry uh, and just doing my art thing, I tried at first to try and bring everybody I remember, you know, up to go to do like a barbecue, try to get people to come. So and hard. at first, at first they all came because it was free food. A lot of people will show up if you give them free food. Yeah. But after a while, it started to get to the point where obviously everyone gets locked up in their own lives. Everyone has their own gigs. Everyone has their own timelines and it just wouldn't happen. And there's still people that I, you know, some people that I've even, some people I was close friends with that just vanished because in a way, I hate to say it, but maybe because I got successful doing something that I'm not connected to them that yeah. didn't want to be involved with that. So they kind of pulled away. There's some close friends that I was a little disappointed with that kind of like went away and I was like, oh shoot. All right. Well, it but, happened. At, but at the same time, that's life, you know, and the people that are going to be there are going to be there. And there's friends that I didn't yeah. even think were close friends that have pulled out and become better friends to me than they were when I was even in the industry because they were basically like not in it because I could get them a gig or I could do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So oh, I yeah. feel like some of those people have kind of like, you know, I've, I've, I've been more happy to stay close to them uh, and, and, and keep the tabs with them because they're true friends, you know, and I guess that's yeah. the nature of it. And I think your level of success in life kind of determines your circle, too, a lot of times. Because when you're out yeah. hustling and when you're out doing things, your time becomes really valuable and constrained. And you can only spend it on so much stuff and, oh, no. and people that aren't doing those same things with you. Yeah. Or, you know, it becomes I've had people difficult. laugh. I've had people laugh at me because, like, well, they'll be just, like, we'll do dinner. I'll be like, oh, and I pull out my phone and I set up a, a date to do dinner. And they're just like, yeah. I'll be like, what do you mean? I'm like, if yeah. I don't put you in here we don't meet yeah <laughs> and, it doesn't you know? happen it doesn't happen or i'm somewhere yeah. else and i forget because i gotta do this because i have i'm literally clocking in almost every day of what i do like, yeah. like and that's the, even as even is my own business i have to wake up every day i have to draw i have to do new pieces i have to get on top you have to you know do whatever other business items that we have to get done and that's the nature of the beast that's part of having your own business you know oh yeah i uh my uh my doctor is is getting dry, driven nuts by my schedule lately i've had to reschedule uh what uh, three times now and every time i reschedule it's like three months three weeks to a month out oh. i'm just like okay well i can't do that anymore i just picked up this how about instead of the fifth we do the 23rd they go the 23rd of march uh, of, of april what you know not right now obviously the coronavirus uh, took it all out yeah. but uh as i was getting up to this point you know that's it. it was it's insane just to get you know an hour of my time that is 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 appropriate in the middle uh, of the week it's it seems so difficult oh totally and other people i just don't think want to accept that reality they think you're blowing them off or you, and it's like it's not that at all i totally want to kick it i want to hang out all the time and party and have fun it's just like i also have all these other things that have to be done well and, even, and i do them well exactly i mean i'm sure you and you're even like i i even in my world where i know yes every week i have a show and i have obligations as a production person i remember you would be i would book almost every damn day if i could oh yeah and, and, every day and sometimes multiple books on a day if you could if it was only going to be like a load out to maybe sometimes another show or something like that because yeah. you never know when this is going to happen when the whole world's coming down to an end and you don't have work for a month yeah so every time i was doing i totally get it you you guys and that's why i felt bad like it was hard to keep tabs of some of the people that i was working with because now that i'm you know yeah i'd come home and take off all of november december just to work and do homework and stuff like that i could still say at night i want to go out and have a, you know have dinner with somebody but not everyone had that lifestyle so i had to play the game and be like oh i guess i guess i don't see anybody now even yeah. though i'm home you know so there you go everybody wants to count it on social media too oh, oh, oh i saw yeah. the post on social media well, we're still friends it's like oh man i mean like like you can come yeah. see my band play or something though too no i totally get it but well damn man yeah i uh i'm super glad that we did this bro it has been Thank great you. catching up man yeah freaking damn we almost hit two hours at this motherfucker <sighs> that is so awesome that we just cruise through two hours so easily man i just that's that's exactly the kind of thing i want to be doing on this podcast Sweet. and i just couldn't be happier with how this this first one went man thank you so much for I'm coming i'm glad to be the you know to be the, the the guinea pig for your for experiment here and uh yeah we'll do some and like i said once you get this all put together i'll we'll share it with my fans i'll get i'll get it on our page so people could see it um i definitely want like to get you out there as much as possible as much as you know you share it we'll get me out there on the thing i don't know if they'll 
they'll have to look at me, but that's their problem. Ah, no, yeah, I know. I definitely want to be out there helping you out with the thing. And like you said, in June, man, let's come out. I'll help you set up. I'll help yeah. you sell some paintings, man. We'll do another podcast, man. Yeah. It'll be super fun, man. Yeah, we'll make forward this happen. To it. That'd be badass. I love it. Well, f- thank you so much, Jerry Pesh, everybody, man. You've been great. And uh, one more time, where can they uh, check out all your stuff? Okay, guys, we're on all social media. So if you're Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff, we're on that. It's obviously Pesh Effects, P E S C E F F E C T S. And we're on a website as PeshEffects.com. Same spelling. Thank you, man. Well, thank you so much, man. Rather. And we'll get on it.